Hey everyone, welcome to the Rooster Podcast. This week brought to you by MeUndies, Squarespace, and Netflix's Dark Crystal. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Barbara. Skinnier than Bernie. And I'm Gus. <laughs> welcome, Jeff. You're hey, Jeff. how's it going? That's actually your name. Not, it is my name, it's Jeff. Not skinnier than Bernie. Uh, technically, my name is Jeffrey, but I'll go by Jeff. Jeffrey. Yes. But, have you ever thought about going back and going by Jeffrey instead? I've never gone by Jeffrey once. Uh, Jeffrey is a word. That's a name for little boys that are in trouble. It's also a name for giraffes. Yeah, giraffes and little boys who got in trouble and are hiding from their moms. Jeffrey's and I haven't been. In, I haven't had to hide from my mom in a while. Jeffrey's not the name of any little boy. Yeah, Just Jeffrey. Saying. Little Jeffrey. No little Jeffreys. Little... I, I imagine there's a lot of Jeffreys in the UK. When I was a kid, it was like little not, Jeffrey not, Paul Wright. Like where did toddlers. you go? And then it was Jeffrey Paul Fink. Is it a popular <laughs> name anymore in the 21st century? Uh, G Jeff or J Jeff. Either, either. I feel like I think I feel like it. It, it may while it may wane in popular, like mass market popularity. I feel like it's popular with a discerning group of uh, procreators. A discerning mm. group of hillbillies. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the, you know, those, those, uh, yeah, the, the, that, uh, that Alabama crowd, they're all about the it's Jeffrey. The, uh, yeah. Like, I don't meet anybody named Barbara who's under the age of 50. I know one other Barbara. Do you really? Just one? Who's, like, around my age. Well, it's funny that we're having this conversation because one of us has the oldest fucking name on Earth. Gus. Oh. Have you oh, ever I, met I, anybody I, uh, under 100 I named I wanna, Gus? I want to <laughs> stop going by Gustavo. You weren't here last week. You should. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Gustavo. Yeah. You can call me Gus. That's, that's not going to be hard. I've only known you for 25 years. Than Gus, though. Yeah, I don't care about making it convenient for other people anymore. Fuck it. What do I care? Mm. Before, that, it was like, Gus is easier for other people to say, fuck it. What the fuck do I care? Dude, Gustavo, that's my actual dude, name. You're in your 40s. Congratulations. That's, <laughs> it's, is that a sign of it? Yeah, no, that's a sign. <laughs> I don't care about being convenient for other people anymore. Fuck them. Oh, dude. Welcome. I've, I've had that attitude Are for a while, though. 40, yeah, yeah, yeah 40, but now 41. you pulled off. 41, okay. You had that in your 20s. You had that attitude. Yeah, I had that. Gus had that from birth. Okay, yeah. Fuck it you, takes mom. on a, it <laughs> takes a, on a different. I was, born, I was born late, so <laughs> <laughs> it takes on a different edge when you get older. I can see it in them. What are what should I expect in my thirties? Thirties uh, are awesome. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It was okay. just fun. Yeah, it's uh everything still works. Yeah, thirties are like you, you're probably doing better in your career than in your twenties. You feel invincible. You're not starting to slow down yet. No, uh, you are a little more. You're just starting to think about shit like long term health and and taxes and. 401ks, but you can still put it off a little bit. Yeah, 30s really are put awesome. Off retirement <laughs> plans, though. What's that? You really shouldn't put off retirement no, plans. No, and I am super responsible. 30, I'm either. talking about yeah. your average 30 No, 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 something. definitely. Yeah. Dude, you got me to that. start retirement in my 20s. Yes, I did. Yeah, I tried to get you in your yeah. teens. Yeah, you did. Um, yeah, uh, long-term health stuff is a thing I think about almost every day now. Yeah. Like, I've got a thing where if I turn a certain way when I'm walking, uh-huh. my left hip hurts a little bit, and I'm like... Oh, that's the start of something bad. Cancer? Rotator yeah, cuff yeah, cancer. <laughs> It's like, oh, that's going to be something that's going to bother me immensely in a decade or so. Did you have more sex in your 20s or 30s? Well, what's... Anything's greater than zero, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me think. That's marriage-based, right? I had way more sex that's, yeah, that's in my second marriage than my first marriage, marriage for yeah. sure. Yeah. I love you, Millie. <laughs> oh, oh right, she's evidence of it. Yeah, she's always here. Case in point. Moment. Yeah, yeah. Right there. one is greater than zero. Yeah, Matt. there you go. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so you you always Jeff, I'm talking. To yes, you. I'm Jeff. You always talk about the terror, and you've always been trying to get me to watch the terror season one. Yes, absolutely. Um, the terror season two just started, and I I started watching. It started last Monday. I watched the first episode of it, and it, it reminded me of you, and it's like, oh, I need, I really need to go back and watch it, because it seems like season one is such an interesting concept. So, season one was phenomenal, uh, more so that it was based on a true story. I admit, the only thing I know about season two of The Terror is that, I know George Takei is in it, I mm-hmm. believe, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. It takes place in an internment camp, or yep. around that time yep. in World War II, and uh, so it's focused on Japanese Americans, and I guess their mistreatment during World War II, of which was plentiful mm-hmm. uh, and then also that it has no uh, production or thematic ties to season one right like it doesn't it's an seem encapsulated like, story yeah kind of like it american makes me think story. of like american horror story yeah. where it's like a, a a unique story that they okay. tell um just self-encapsulated in, in each season and how, how first far episode ahead? was good it was it was slow they, they're definitely it's like oh they're setting up everything is it supernatural yes there's a supernatural element to it okay yeah, because so, one was so definitely super. It seems kind of the same way where you talk about like I still haven't seen one where it's like kind of grounded in reality, but then they add like the supernatural element in on top of it. But the, and then also the supernatural element, it uh, I mean it it helps with some convenient tropes, but a lot of it you're not sure if it's real or imagined, and then um, it's really. More of a device to help tell the larger story, which is how those people got lost in the ice and what may have happened to them, mm-hmm. and what may have happened to them was only partially due to the supernatural shit. 
if that makes sense. Hmm. So I, I liked it because it wasn't a supernatural story. It was a story that had it was a, like a true horror story that had supernatural elements, I would say. So I would be interested okay. to see if season two follows that path or if it just goes conveniently like horror movie. Yeah, like no one supernatural in the like none of the characters in the show are aware of anything supernatural. But as the viewer, you see like weird stuff happening around them. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'll definitely watch it because I, I was such a fan of the first one. Yeah, second episodes today. Okay, so yeah. I'll check it out. Is it AMC right? Yeah. Okay. AMC. Good show. I'm always looking for something something good to watch. Do you watch it on the AMC app or do you watch it on like Hulu? I watch or? it on TV. Oh, you have cable? I have cable. Oh, me too. You really are Gus. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, can I? Oh, seriously, you and I were both early cord cutters. Mm -hmm. I went like seven or eight years without cable when I lived. Yeah, when the writer strike happened, I didn't have cable for years. Right. Cut my yeah. cord you at you first. and I both. Yeah. Congratulations, by the way. Very good. And uh, I'm still dragging mine around. It's super hard to hide in shorts. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, sorry, I got <laughs> lost my own head on my own joke. I was really laughing at that on the inside. Um, but I've gone back to cable a couple years ago, mostly because of basketball. And boy, I don't regret it. The, the only reason that I really use it, like I, I have Hulu live TV as well. And I actually prefer watching uh, live TV on Hulu. I just, like, nope, how, how can I express this? It seems like it's more convenient. Like it's an older system when you're using cable TV. Yeah. So it's like you know that when you record or when you do shit, like it's gonna work. You can schedule it all out. Yeah. Um, the one thing I do really like about cable and having cable because I did it my my last apartment I was at it was like included in my apartment is just having the TV on. Hmm. Like yeah. not necessarily watching anything, just having noise. Especially if you live alone, uh, it's nice to just have like stuff going on in the makes, background. Makes the mundane a little less sad when you're lonely, I guess. A little yeah. bit. You don't hear the ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, or things that might the, scare you. But then the only problem I have is like with like you talked about AMC, like the AMC app. Like I don't like having to wait till the next day to watch something. That AMC app sucks too, by Does the way. It? It's, it's not great. I have a question for you though about Hulu and then maybe you can answer because you're much smarter than I am. All right. So I have Hulu without commercials. Okay. Right? Like the whatever it is, thirteen ninety nine a month you pay or yeah. I have no idea what I pay, but it's just commercial free Hulu. So I can watch an episode it's six of six bucks more to play yeah. to, to get commercial free. I my my girlfriend has Hulu Live TV and that's like forty or fifty bucks yeah. a month. But Hulu Live TV still has commercials. I understand it has to have commercials during live programming. But if I watch an episode of Veronica Mars on my fourteen dollar Hulu, I don't have commercials. Right. So you if have she watches you, it. So she does. You, you have to have live TV, and then you can pay another six dollars a month to get live TV plus no commercials on the VOD stuff. I'll just keep logging one of us out and the other back in. <laughs> so that yeah, it's just like you have to have one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have to have that. As you, an have to, add you have to buy both services. Right. Okay. If you get live TV, it doesn't automatically include. No commercial on VOD. Thank you for uh, making that clear to me. Yeah, I you could have just gone to like their page with all of their different uh, Why would I packages. do that when you're right here? I am, I am right here. <laughs> you're a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> You've been my knowledge base since 1998, Gus. <laughs> knowledge base, Jesus. I have that issue with who because I watch a lot of Hulu. Uh, I've been watching Bachelor in Paradise, which I want to talk to Jeff about. Okay, let's do it. Um, but which it one sucks. is that one? It, okay, go ahead, sorry. It's, uh, so you know the Bachelor series, yes. obviously. They take previous contestants who've been on the show uh, and the just put them all on the island. Sluttiest, most outrageous contestants. Yeah. The the fan favorites or fan, I guess, least favorites. Love to hate them or love to love them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the people who make the most interesting reality the, TV. The, the, the people who are going to drop pants the fastest, honestly. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Why haven't I not been on that? I don't know, I've guys. Been on that. Yeah. If I can, uh, you tell me. Would Esther be okay with that? <laughs> She'll probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if she didn't have to go, she'd probably be fine. <laughs> but that, like, I don't know why. I, there's some TV that I love, even though it's so fucking bad. Mm -hmm. And this is, like, bad TV. Do you like Bachelor in Paradise? I fucking love it. Okay. Yeah. I find Bachelor in Paradise is a little too scuzzy for me to get into. What is oh, that? What is that Like, it's a little too it's a little, the, the trashy, I intentions guess. Intentions are a little too... Like it's hard Too to sexual. follow. Well, so I would of those shows that are the current iterations of those shows, I would say Temptation Island is the best. Love Island is the second best, and I include all Love Islands: Australia, England, and U.S. Even though Australia is the best, then England, then the U.S. Although U.S. is quite good. Then I would put Bachelor in Paradise. Then I would put uh, X on the Beach, which is just never heard of that. Forty-five one. minutes of dog shit with uh, a bra on, like it's a, or, <laughs> or, or or like a speedo. It's terrible. But um, in the first episode of every X on the Beach, somebody will fuck and fight, like instantly. Uh, and maybe at the same time. Okay, do they fight and fuck at the same time? <laughs> yeah. It, uh, so like, whereas like 
Temptation Island and Love Island, they're great because they're... Temptation that, Island, is that where people who are in relationships go? Yeah, to test their relationships. God, that's <laughs> fucked up It's the me. best. The re, The most recent season was phenomenal. Uh, it, it actually just brought it back. So, it hadn't uh, been on I, the TV in like 11 years. I looked up the synopsis for X on the Beach. Okay. I just want to read it here. Yeah. A group of famous singles head to a tropical island for a chance at love, but paradise doesn't last long when the star's former flames wash ashore to break up their good time. Here's here, <laughs> here and here's let me add to that. Let me and let me add to that panache. It's an MTV show. Yeah, so, so you know MTV it's show, terrible. Yeah. And then the people that they cast it with are people from like Road Rules and The Challenge and all those like weird MTV like activity reality yeah. TV shows. Uh, it very rarely do you see people that come from other reality TV shows. It's usually like the trashier of the reality shows. So it's like the trashiest of the trashy. And whereas like Temptation Island and Love Island are quite salacious and quite psychologically fun to watch people ruin their lives and fuck with each other. Uh, there's still a pretense of a show there. X on the Beach and I feel like Bachelor in Paradise is like one notch above that. It's just put people in a villa with alcohol and encourage them to fight and, and every sex. now and then bring in a new person that's gonna and every once in a while bring in a new person yeah. yeah so i'm having try i, I, I want to like bachelor in paradise i think the reason i like it so much is because i know a lot of the people on the show from the previous See, i've never yeah. watched the bachelor okay yeah there's a lot of people from this most previous season who are on this one yeah i've never I have, i've yet to visit bachelor nation so i, I don't know it's a, it's definitely something to get into. Is it? Yeah. I imagine I would appreciate it more. I, I only watched the first two episodes. How far are, into it are you? I want to say there's three or four episodes out now. Okay, I'll catch Maybe up. Maybe actually only two. I'll catch up because I'm missing Love Island pretty bad right yeah. now. It's, it's a good replacement for yeah. it. Yeah. You get those shows like Love Island, Gus, five days a week. I was going to say, it sounds like these shows have such quick production turnaround. Like they have like six seasons a year for each of them. Love Island in particular. I know Bachelor in Paradise has two episodes a week. That are like an hour and a half each. Yeah, they're so long. a lot of content. Love Island, I think, is yeah, five days a week. And it's I think put out the next day that it's filmed. Yeah, Love Island is five days a week in the US and for I don't know, like twenty or thirty episodes. Love Island UK and Love Island Australia, you guys are prolific. I know you do the opposite on your sitcoms, but that show comes <laughs> on seven days a week. One of the days is an hour long recap. So six new episodes, one recap every week, and they go for fifty to sixty episodes a season. Damn. Yeah, it's just like the Big Brother format. It's, it's the like, exact same as the starts, Big Brother format. Yeah. It ends and you show everything in between. Yeah. It's fantastic. Right. It's too what, much. I, what I like about and I think we talked about it last time, what I like about Love Island is that <clears throat> they don't really have cameramen or anything or crews. It's just these cameras that are placed all around the villa. It mm -hmm. sounds like Big Brother. Yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> it's like Big I guess Brother. I never watched Big Brother, so I never. But the idea of like the premise of the show, Gus, is like they take six guys and six girls. They don't know each other. They put them in a mansion on the beach together. Like the, in the U.S., it's Fiji. In the it's like in a Spanish island in the U.K. Fiji's and, not in the U.S. Um, a U.S. version of the show okay, it's gotcha, Fiji. Gotcha, gotcha. In the British <laughs> and, and Australian <laughs> show, it's some it's some Spanish island. But anyway, they put them in there, and then they'll literally uh, they'll stick six guys in a swimming pool up to like their ankles in short shorts showing off their junk and they're they're all ripped and stupid as all hell and they'll stand there and then they'll parade six women out uh that are similarly dressed and uh brilliant one at a time right? and one at a time and they'll go uh miranda you have six men in front of you which one do you want to be your boyfriend and she'll go i'll take that guy and then he comes over and he's her boyfriend and then they sleep <laughs> in the same bed that night and for the yeah. next Jesus. week, yeah, they're, they're dating. Sleep. Jesus. And they all sleep in the same bed in the same room. They have like a big ass bedroom with like, oh, ten, yeah. Where be people like are six beds and they're all in so the like bed 100% together. banging. They're all banging and they're yeah, all. Yeah, they will ha absolutely have sex. And the creepy part is there's cameras in there too. Yeah. Like there's cameras everywhere. You say it's creepy, but you watch it. Yeah, the creepy part yeah. is watching it. <laughs> yeah, I do. And it's great. <laughs> But it's also I'm great not the too, one filming it. Because they'll <laughs> I'm like not the one filming it. <laughs> they'll also, or they'll like bring a guy out, and they'll be like four girls, or like the six girls, and they'll go, "Which one? Like, if you're interested in this guy, Enrique or whatever his name is, step forward." And like three girls will step forward, and then he'll get to pick from the or three like girls, nobody or vice will versa. step forward, or nobody steps forward. It's and then it's like I it's the like, guy nobody wants ends up getting partnered with the the last girl. She's like, oh, fuck, it's like in the Simpsons work. when they have the the bachelor auction, and Mo comes out, and they like walk straight into the reject <laughs> <laughs> area. I just it's like a little spin and goes straight. Yeah. I don't know when. You though, are you allowed to just go home? No, you have no. to. Get you picked. have to live with the show. Well, they win like 125 oh, okay. grand or something if they make it to the end of the show. You got to bang your way to 125 grand. That's even better. At the end, the couple that wins, like spoilers, if you didn't watch the U.S. Love Island, you should have. It was Zach and uh, Elizabeth. Uh, then they go to like Zach and Elizabeth, and they go like Elizabeth, here's a check for 125 thousand dollars. You can keep it or share it with your with the guy. And she's like, 
I guess I'll share it. Or she could just be like, man, fuck you, hit the hit the bricks, buddy. I got all the money. Why would, why would and he like, can make it all the way to the why end. Why would they ever share it? Because love, it's a love test. Did you really fall in love? Usually... Did Elizabeth <laughs> really fall in love with Zach? Or was she just in it for the how, money? How, how long are they together? It's Three like weeks. A... So would you take sixty? Would you spend sixty two thousand five hundred dollars on someone that you've known for three weeks? The answer should always be no. I totally agree. Well, I think right. <laughs> with the, it's longer than three weeks. It's like I, a couple months. Right? Uh, I think it's like three, three weeks, weeks in the U.S. It's longer but, than the British, but okay. the U.S. season was Is truncated. Three weeks of love worth more than sixty two thousand dollars. Okay, when you met Esther three weeks later, would you have given her that cash? I think we were engaged. <laughs> <laughs> So you give her half of your cash forever. <laughs> well, that's well, part. well, also you got to think too, like so you'd give it away more than that. <laughs> if you're a reasonably intelligent young twenty-something uh, who is probably a fitness, like a workout person or a mo like an Instagram model or whatever, these people are usually like, I'm a I'm a fitness gym guy. Personal trainer, is that what's called? Yeah. That's yeah. One, yeah. Or fitness gym guy. I'm a fitness gym guy, or I'm an Instagram model, and I sell, like, detox tea or whatever. Um, the long play is, yes, obviously, we're in love, and we're going to pick each other over the money, and then share the money, and then also share the brand deals. And the long t the, the, I, I think that those people are thinking uh, about the long tail. Mm. You know, how much more money am I going to get off the story of this? Gotcha. Than, yeah. Also, it's how they're going to be perceived, I think, by the public as well. Like, if you're the asshole that takes the money after... Being in love on the show in front Brutal. of all these people, you're kind of a dick. But you can play the heel. I mean, I you guess I'm use... okay with that. Like, I'd be fine. Sure, you're, you'd be okay with that. But yeah. sounds I'd... like Golden Balls. Did you ever see that show? What are you talking about? With Golden Balls? Did you make that up right no, now? It's no. Golden Balls. Golden Balls. There's, there's something like you get to the end, and then there's just two people left. I know I've never seen the show. I just seen the endings. But <laughs> if if you agree that you'll both share the money, then you share it. Oh, yeah. And then if one of them takes it and one of them says that they'll share it, the person who takes it gets it. And it's like these this weird mind games at the end. That's how they end Temptation Island. And they literally <laughs> have these balls in their hands that you can smash on the ground to say if you keep it or not. I saw one guy win it in a great way before. He was just he just said to the other guy, I'm going to take it. And I'll split it with you. And he just said he would, he would take it. If you sure. say you'll take it, you none of us will get it. I'm definitely going to take it. And then he, the other guy just said he would... Share yeah, because if both say take, none of them get it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Ooh, brutal. I so he was, he was just like straight that out of the gate. Yeah. He was like, I'm taking it. <laughs> and no one had ever done that. He's like, it. I'm not lying. Nothing you say is going to change my mind. Like, this is what's going to happen. Because if both people might share, then there's a risk of someone to get it all. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah, the, something that I love about Bachelor in Paradise is there's so many characters on this season that are so cringy to watch, but in a good way. Like, there's this one guy named Cam. Who, oh yeah, I know Cam. Yeah. He, uh, if this gives you any context, he's a white guy that likes to rap. Um, well, he's the guy that was like he he kept getting in trouble for being like double crossing girls, right? No, that's someone what else. That mean? That's oh. Blake. Blake, yeah, Blake. I'm <laughs> that, sorry. That's the guy. That's the guy who like slept with a bunch of the contestants <laughs> on the show and then realized that they were all going to be on this season of Bachelor in Paradise and then okay. has to deal with them all and like <laughs> is, is trying to be all like like he good literally. Guy. There are two girls on the show that uh, he went and. Got dumped by the bachelor, I guess on her season went to one of the other girls and Slept, slept with, her, with her and then 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 left her house and went to another girl's house and slept with her and it was paparazzi and both of those girls are like What the fuck dude? Mm. And he's like we were dating. It's pretty funny. Yeah, and, and then he has to live with him He cries in front of the camera a lot too. Mm -hmm. guess the name of the host of Golden Bulls Gavin no. Uh just an English show hosted by an English person. What's their name? Peter Hayes. No. It's not English. Uh, <coughs> blimey <laughs> Buttercup. That's what I was, I was going to say, blimey buttocks. Jasper Carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Jasper so, Carrot. So, I'm sorry, what about Cam? Oh, it's just like, it's just it's so insanely cringy to watch. There's this one girl on the show named like Kaylin, <laughs> who was on a previous season of The Bachelor. That apparently he had had his eye on for uh -huh. a while and like he knew he was going to be she was going to be on the show and somehow they ended up like talking and then kissing because she was desperate to get a rose. Which girl is this? Kaylin. Kaylin. Okay. She's like one of the uh, um, like Miss Al not Miss Alabama uh, who was on Hannah B's season. She has like a very flat face. Okay. Um, anyways, but they ended up kissing and then in his interviews after the fact he's talking about like. Yeah, you know, like it could be me and her at the end. I could be down on one knee proposing, you know, like this could be love. And 
just essentially falling in love with her already. Yeah. And then like the next guy that comes in, she's like all over. Oh yeah. And that's he's the just best. like and moping around. See, and that's the that's that's where you would enjoy this part of the show because then you get uh, just a lot of shots of like six or seven people hanging out and the girl ha- talking to the new guy and like has her arm around him or whatever and then a dude in the corner just like this. <laughs> oh, no, why would I want to watch it? I lived that for fucking. I know. Because <laughs> when <laughs> yeah, you and me both, buddy, because it's fun to watch somebody else suffer. <laughs> Well, there's this one shot of him after like these two people were making out. There's one shot of him walking alone on the beach at night and like walking into the water and this wave crashes up and hits him in the crotch <laughs> and he tries to play it off because the cameras are on him. <laughs> it's just like shit like that all the time. I don't know why. I just love it. <laughs> I eat it up. This episode of the Receive Podcast is brought to you by Me Undies. Me Undies is here to change your underwear. Well, not literally, but it's here to change the way you think about it. They believe undies shouldn't take themselves seriously. Uh, they believe that undies should be soft. Fit every booty like it was made for every booty. Offer fun patterns that give you the freedom to express yourself. Uh, I love how comfortable MeUndies are. Think of the softest fabric you've ever touched, and MeUndies are probably softer than that. They stay in place, and they're really as soft as they say they are, I swear. Uh, MeUndies also believes that every woman should have the freedom to wear whatever cut they want, in whatever color they want, and whatever size they want. So ladies rejoice. The Feel Free Collection is here. MeUndies size tested these five new silhouettes on every body type with an ultra soft feather light waistband that provides zero restriction. These undies will be the best thing that has ever been on your body, offered in sizes from extra small to 4XL. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, when you purchase any MeUndies product, you get 15% off and free shipping. So to get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash roosterteeth. That's MeUndies.com slash roosterteeth. Thank you, MeUndies, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Have you, uh, have you started watching The Family on Netflix yet? The Family. That's the docu series oh, no, about, the about the super super religious yeah. people. Yeah, I haven't started watching that yet. Very dry. I, I fell asleep in the third episode last night. Really? I need to go back and rewatch it. Someone was years ago. Someone was trying to tell me about another group <clears throat> called the Family in Australia. Were you there? Was it Frank? Was, was he trying to recruit you? No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, the, about how it was like this group of people in Adelaide who like secretly run everything and didn't make you disappear if you like talked about them too. Or should I not be talking about them? Oh, <laughs> if you talked about them too much, it was like this whole weird thing. I thought you were there, but I guess uh, not. No, I, not not now. Not I, a, I, I, well, not I as get this moment. <laughs> if uh, if you aren't there, no, I haven't started watching that yet. Um, what else is on Netflix? There was something else I wanted to watch on Netflix. That diagnosis is that it? Yeah, that's a new show. I that think. show where they like crowdsource. Um, like uh, uh, illnesses, yeah. With what's her face? Yeah, um, I, I was gonna start trying to watch that maybe <clears throat> like tomorrow. It was like Anne Curry, maybe? I don't remember. I've, 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 I've started watching it. um, like tower stuff from airports, like the uh, oh, like air traffic tower? control, air traffic control. I, I can recommend some YouTube channels. I've, I've, I've just been binging one of them. The, the amount of times where the tower just give an instruction that's gonna kill a ton of people, and the pilots are like, oh, shit. <laughs> there was one where. I think it was like Delta, the call sign was 3828 or something, and the other one was 1328, and they both tried to take off into each other. Mm. And the tower's like, ah, but it's terrifying. And I, I guess the people on the plane never hear anything about it. No, you don't know. It makes you wonder like how many planes you've been on where you're about to die, and then someone noticed and then stopped it from happening. I subscribe. It's terrifying. Uh, what is it on YouTube? I subscribe to VAS <laughs> Aviation. Why would you ever tell me that? VAS Aviation. That's is the that one, yeah. yeah. He does all like the, the flight track and visuals and all the planes coming in. There was one a couple weeks is ago. Is it tense? Sometimes it can be. Yeah, there was yeah, one it's co- so real, and there's tons of emergencies. Like, like there's one girl who took off. She's a student. It was a, one of her first solo flights, and the wheel fell off her plane. And she took off. You know, there, we... there was one a couple of weeks <clears throat> ago where I think it was a, it, I think it was an Eva Air flight that took off from LAX, and like they would like the 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 person in the tower, and then they just weren't coordinating each other correctly, and instead of like heading south, it ended up going north and was flying into the mountains and was about to hit the mountains. Like just outside of LA. Oh, because he kept going north, and the, and the woman's like, "South, go right. southbound." You saw, you saw yeah. that one. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> she's like, so she's like having to move all the other planes in the air. She's like, immediate climb, seven thousand feet, turn yeah. south. The best stuff is the tower getting pissed at pilots, and pilots just getting pissed at each other as well. It's yeah. the great was of people just being really snarky. Here, my fucking way, dude. Boom. <laughs> Did you see that clip on social of? Uh, a time lapse of all the planes over the San Diego airport. That was super cool. It was like over a twenty-four hour period or something. That was insane because San Diego is not even a hub airport. Not really, no. Correct. Mm-mm. And so to see that many planes come in is just fucking. It was all like, in, and they did, they showed it all like in thirty seconds or something, right? Yeah. It was like a real like quick thing, and they just all landed. That was really neat. Speaking yeah. of, hubs. I, I heard them when we were out there for Comic Con because oh, our hotel was right sure. by the airport, and it, 
it was very apparent. If that time lapse was during Comic Con, that would make sense. Were we yeah. we were at the same hotel, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're uh did did you hear that Delta might be getting a hub in Austin? Like yeah, a mini hub? Yeah, they they wanted to make Austin like a I forget what they call it, like a focus city or something where uh-huh. it's like not an official full blown hub, but, but where it's we like start like a, yeah. increasing operations. But there was a, a rumor the other day that there's going to be a lot more international nonstop flights out of Austin and that almost all of them will be probably serviced by Delta. Yeah. I want to say it was like Austin to Tokyo, it, Seoul, Amsterdam. It is Amsterdam. And uh, I just read the same list too. The Tokyo and Amsterdam were the big ones for me, but there was somewhere else really cool like Lisbon or like somewhere in Portugal or maybe Barcelona or somewhere I'll, as I'll well. Because um, I was thinking the other when I when I saw that, Dude, the only way to make me leave American would be to put a hub for any other airport. That's exactly in what I thought. I was like, oh, you do. Okay, here it is. I found it. <laughs> Amsterdam, Beijing, Dublin, Paris, Seoul, Shanghai, Tokyo. Okay, yeah, yeah. I would, pro- I would consider leaving American to switch to Delta or whoever how far if is I could Beijing? get direct flights, real direct, direct flights out of Austin. But how far is Beijing from Shanghai? Beijing to Shanghai <clears throat> flight time. We'll do it that way. Uh, it is a two-hour, fifteen-minute flight. I feel like you don't need two direct flights from Austin to both those places. To Beijing, to Beijing and Shanghai. Well, I think it's like a list. Like they might not all happen, okay. but it's like the ones that they're working on. I always on. imagine when someone's responding to someone while typing that they're just going and just that, like that, it's that. nothing. And press enter. Like that would be. Could you imagine how awesome it would be to be if Austin was a like a Chicago or an LA yeah. or a New York style city, Tokyo, where you could go anywhere in the world on one flight. I would love that because I, I want to go. I want to go back to Tokyo when the, uh, Nintendo opens up that Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios, and they said they're going to open it before the the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. So. It should be opening within the next year. Mm-hmm. So it's like if if there were a nonstop Austin to Tokyo flight, I would definitely do that. I would take the nonstop Austin to Tokyo flight at least once a year, every year. Mm-hmm. I still haven't <laughs> been to Japan. Take that environment. Oh, it's phenomenal. I mean, I've only been there. I only went there for two days. Millie and I went there for a very short vacation, but oh, it was. Yeah. It's probably the probably the coolest place I've ever been on Earth. I think yeah. I've talked about it extensively, but it is easily the coolest place I've ever been. I'm trying to reduce the carbon footprint of myself. Don't know why I phrased it like that. If I'd stop eating meat, how many flights is that? <laughs> how many hamburgers make a flight? Make an international because, flight. Because meat is awful, right? It's like one of the biggest. It's the biggest. Uh, just yeah. eating steak. Hamburger. Car- so I, while I looked this up. Didn't Burger I, King just come out with the Impossible I ate burger? the Impossible Whopper yesterday. How was it? At Burger King. It tastes just like a Whopper. Really? Oh, sweet. Yeah. Like what's good? It, what's it made of? Uh, I don't know, plant-based stuff. It was it was pretty good. It's the uh, same. I, I, I eat the Beyond Meat stuff. Like I buy the Beyond Meat and yeah. I'll grill that at home, and <clears> I think that's really good. They have that Impossible Meat at um, uh, Freebirds, right? Do they? Yeah, I think so. Mm. I just realized that and, my. So what did you say? Would you say Austin to Tokyo, or what? Do, what, do you have a, like a, a flight you want to said... compare against? No, I don't. I'm just. I just don't want to fly as much. I don't how about, how let's about, say Austin to LA. Uh, let's say, how about Austin to London? There you go. That's, that's Austin big. to London. Carbon footprint. How many steaks is Austin to so London? A quarter pound <laughs> patty of beef is four pounds of greenhouse gas. Right. Okay. So, oh my I'm, I'm, God. Yeah. So I'm going to look up so Austin to London's carbon footprint, and then we can figure carbon out carbon footprint of one passenger on yes, say yeah. a ton of people. In that How plane. do you? We'll do all that stuff. So do we do a return trip? Yeah, I want to come back. You want to come back, <laughs> Austin <laughs> to uh, Heathrow? Yeah, yes, please. I feel like you have a travel agent. <laughs> yeah, please, <smoke. laughs> yeah, This is fascinating. Okay, let's see. Well, total flight. Ooh. Uh, it's 1.36 tons. For one person? Um, no. Probably for the... Economy pool. class direct... So that's like what? Return flight. 2,800 pounds or something? Let's see. It, that's, that's what it gave me. That's what it gave me. <laughs> Trips one. Economy class, yeah. What, it, asks, it asks what class you want. Does, what, does that matter? What well, because the ask? business class seat takes up more space. So let's see. First, God damn it! it why does it clear? It cleared everything <laughs> I put in. <laughs> LHR. Uh, so it'll do first class to see if it's any different. First class is six point eight tons. Uh, right, because if the whole plane was economy, right. It so let's be say one point three six times two thousand. That's twenty seven twenty pounds. Twenty seven twenty divided by four. Uh, yeah, that's six hundred eighty burgers to offset one round trip. Economy ticket to God, London. I got three fly burgers less, a man. day. Uh, and half the or flights. Just, just stop eating hamburgers and you'll be fine. <laughs> half the flights to take. I didn't even want to be on the flight. The flight anyway. I didn't Dude, even buy them. I canceled three flights in the last two weeks for 
like different for other reasons for like reasons I couldn't go out of town and uh, It's like the best feeling in the world. Oh, dude. It's so good if, yeah. if a trip if it especially an international trip if it falls through like day of or the night before I don't think I've ever been happier in my life. Uh, yeah, <laughs> than that feeling I'm just like Yes, no one you my don't, bed. This is the part where we get in trouble for talking about flying all the time But no one that you don't have to get on that plane and go sleep in a hotel or whatever Oh, and you get to sleep in your own bed. Yeah, eat your own cereal Ugh. Eat your own if, impossible burger. If, yeah, if, like, like I eat cereal on keto. But. That's a new graphic. That wasn't really a story about any plane. We we were holding off using it, but uh, we've used it a couple of times and nobody's noticed. Oh really? <laughs> Another plane story graphic just flew across the screen. I, I never. Uh, I guess I don't really look at that screen very much. Didn't we used to have other confidence monitors there and there? You yeah, you guys were looking at yourselves too much, so we decided to mix it up. Now I'm only why, why does Eric ourselves? get to make all the decisions, Gus? Uh, he's he's producer on the podcast. What does it you got here 30 seconds before the show then we had to go run to the bathroom it's, When could I run an idea by you? Is this real <laughs> Eric or a soundboard? <laughs> uh, we, have, we have slack Eric. It's oh like a God. you have right. that's true. You have answered me once So thank that, you. I was oh, gonna say that. Wow, you, that's you, more don't than don't me. Slack me. I'll never you reply. confirmed on the calendar for today's podcast. I did. That's why I didn't have to text you. you I, I actually I slacked Eric when you confirmed it. I was like holy shit. Look, Gavin replied to, be, to a calendar invite. Why did you, you trying to be a better person? Why did you? Yeah, why did you say yes to this one? Oh, I was in England um, seeing my family, and I just didn't have anything to do. <laughs> so but you're usually, sweating. I'm quite busy, and, and a calendar invite is so far down my list. You can't hit accept. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks. I, I have mine. The notifications pop up on mine, so I, do, I just get like the thing on my screen. And it's like close or accept. I'm like, accept, accept. That way I don't have to go through. I just open my Google email. calendar and I just look like what is still blank in mm. terms of my response and just respond. You could do it that way. It takes like yep. two seconds. I just asked Sarah to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you were talking about reality TV shows. Uh huh. And uh, I've got one I want to talk about. Okay. Do, do, uh, do any of you watch MasterChef? Absolutely. Okay, good. I'm good. I have not watched the last. I fell off last season and I haven't watched this season. I've watched yet. every season of MasterChef. Okay. They're on season 10 right now. And I realized several weeks ago, maybe no, it was pretty close to the beginning of season 10, that I'm just hate watching MasterChef. Yeah, because the show sucks. It sucks. And it's like, I, I started really thinking about the show. And at its fundamental, the show makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> it's like the premise of the show is they want to find America's best home cook, right? So they have this whole thing that people come in, they're like, make us your best home cooked dish. And they make it, and it's like, oh, you're a great home cook. You're going to you be on the show. If you yourself, isn't it technically always home cooked? I you cook it at work. Did you? I don't know the answer to that. If you. Yes. Uh, sorry. Yes. So they're not, they're not planning on working in a restaurant. Well, so then they start the show. They are. And every challenge is work in a five star, in a three Michelin star restaurant kitchen and make this insanely difficult dish. Or it's like, they'll have a challenge in the MasterChef kitchen. It's like, make uh, a souffle in 45 minutes. And it's like, this isn't home chef stuff. Right. And it's like, they all know how to do it. <clears throat> and it's all so fucking self-important. They're like, this dish isn't worthy of season 10 of MasterChef. It's like, you fucking people. These people <laughs> haven't been on the show for 10 seasons. Yeah. This is the one season they're on. It's not like they've been practicing for it's 10 like seasons. any better or worse than the season 5 contestants. Right. It doesn't you're, make any fucking sense. You're the sense. assholes who picked them. And they're all like, this is the world famous, most famous kitchen in the world. The Master... N no. So here... No one gives a fuck about that stuff. <laughs> two things there. One, uh, my problem with MasterChef's a little different. Uh, but two, did you see the Reddit thread recently uh, with the producer or one of the producers on MasterChef who answered a bunch of questions, did like a little AMA about MasterChef? No. I didn't read it, but my girlfriend did. She was telling me about it. Some really fascinating stuff. Like when they're not on camera, they're sequestered in rooms with all the cookbooks in the world. And they can go through all the cookbooks. They can learn anything they want. They can do as much. They're encouraged to study and read cookbooks and just like study constantly. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to write anything down. They have to commit it all to memory. Mm -hmm. But they have like basically like here's all the world's knowledge on food. But I feel like with cooking, you, need you to just memorize put it. Put into practice. And then they and they 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 do practice rounds before they do televised rounds. And what I thought was interesting is the food that they taste, like Joe and or like, is Joe still on it or he's back yeah, on it Joe's now? Yeah, Joe's back on it. It's like Joe and Aron and uh, and Gordon, Gordon. Ramsay. Um, Christina's gone. Yeah, she's gone. She was only in for like three seasons. She four was doing seasons? kids. Yeah, she's she, still doing she, kids. No, she came in to replace Graham Elliot. Yeah, when he left. Yeah, and then when she left, no, she, I think that's she when... replaced Joe, and then Graham left the season because Graham did one season with her. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, I liked her. Someone's laughing. This is all very serious. And I liked Graham. But uh, 
Another thing that I think is really fascinating. I got undercooked chicken when I ate at Graham Elliott's restaurant. Did you really? Do you yeah. want in Chicago? Yeah. Ugh. That's the worst. Uh, that can make you sick. Yeah. That's a no-go on MasterChef. Uh, so another thing that I thought was most interesting is they prepare the food, right? And then it goes in for beauty shots. And then it takes about an hour to an hour and a half to do all the beauty shots of all the food. Mm -hmm. And then the the uh, judges eat the food. I always they wondered about that. Food. Yeah, it always seemed like I always wonder from a production standpoint how they time all of that. They have to eat. They say that, that the crew and everybody goes to lunch during the beauty shots, except for the people that do the beauty shots. So then everybody comes back in eat. so that when Gordon Ramsay's eating that piping <clears throat> hot plate of food, it's ice cold. And he said they're just professional enough that they know what it should taste like and like what it tastes down, like cooled down. Mm -hmm. And they can like extrapolate what out. it would have tasted like fresh oh, some and that they say it sucks but as long as they figure as long as everybody's food is just it's as cold, cold as everybody yeah. else's it's fair and that's the system they use what if you make like i know you won't but stuff with like eggs yeah because like cold eggs just taste fucking bad what if they, just mi what if they microwave it i don't think they do i think it's <laughs> that, i think that's why you see them spit some stuff out when it's undercooked and stuff because it's like not only is this raw but it's been raw <laughs> it's for like two hours yeah. does anything go bad after the hour yeah. and a half i would assume well i don't know because that wouldn't if you like, something, anything like that on camera a heat lamp over it what if you have like yeah, ice that's... cream yuck it yep. dries it out. It'll, it'll be as I don't know that's cold. Them, uh, I don't remember. They, 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 maybe there are special circumstances for the dessert episodes. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they get thrown into a freezer or whatever. Um, but the, the problem I have with MasterChef is that it's followed the, like, Hell's Kitchen, Kitchen Nightmares, MasterChef have followed the same path 24 hours to hell and back. 24 I never, I've watched two episodes of that and will watched, never watch it again. They watched all of them. They were terrible. They They're were all so terrible. Bad. But th that's, like, that's the, uh, even <clears throat> lower down. Like, they started... Kitchen Nightmare started as a show about fixing fucked up kitchens, yeah. especially the UK version. The UK version, the UK is, great. version is completely. The American different version American. was never as good as the UK version, but it was closer at the beginning of the show than what than it was by the end. What is it now then? What was it at the end? It very quickly, by about two or three seasons in, Hell's Kitchen's the worst. It devolves into just reality TV and just drama and fighting. It's just about the interplay Gordon between the contestants fighting and Hell's Kitchen. It's just about them getting in trouble and then going back upstairs and then yelling at each other and catching that on film. Has nothing to yeah. do with the food. I, Master I gave Chef up on Hell's was, Kitchen. Master Chef was the break from that. It was like the respite yeah. from that, which is what I loved about Master Chef. But by about season five, it started to go that route. And now I can't get through a season of Master Chef either because it's the same thing. It's just dumb drama and people. People hating and fighting each other, and they, I just, they, I it's like less they, on Master Chef, but it's yeah, still they, they don't have as much of that. I'm a Top Chef man because they just fucking Tom and Padma are boring, and they just make people cook. And I've never, I've food. never watched Top Chef. Yeah, it's. Good. I like Iron Chef. Hmm. Iron Chef's great. I've, Iron I, Chef I, is I my watched, favorite. Iron Chef a long time ago. I don't know. Do they still have, like make new episodes? I don't know. Mm. Um, I think Alton Brown does it now, right? Probably, yeah. yeah. Iron Chef America. Anyone, anyone watch Chopped with Tom yeah. from Queer Eye? Uh, I like Chopped because it's quick. It's like thirty minutes. I've seen the. Uh, I've seen. Like, a, I've seen a thousand yeah. episodes. I've never like watched a season in a row. Yeah, same here. It's like if it's on, I'll be like, oh yeah, I'll watch that for a bit. It's, like, it's a good show. You, you're, it's not the same. It's like three people, thirty minutes, and you're done. It's I, like you're not like I didn't watch before. I'm, I don't have to worry about what's watching what's next. Yeah, I think the little <clears> pyramid <throat> conceit of that show is great, where you like start with four, and then you whittle down yeah. to three, and then two, and then, yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's a cool way to do it. It's, it's a good. It's a good show. I became obsessed with like. House shows like House Hunters and home oh. makeover shows, Flip or Flop. I'm like glad you brought this up. Well, go ahead. But no, I mean there wasn't much to the story of just like there was a so, time period where I was obsessed with watching those. So shows. I, I was curious. The other day I was watching House Hunters, right? Yeah. And uh, it was an episode in Austin, and I was like, oh, that's weird. I've, I've never seen uh, an episode uh, of House Hunters set in Austin. So then I started thinking. I was like, have I in all the years I've watched House Hunters, have I ever seen the same episode twice? Because I don't think I ever have. So then I decided to look it up. House Hunters has 2,131 episodes. Yeah. Which was the... Over 2,000 episodes. I, I, don't, I don't know what season they're on now. Most recent episode, according to IMDb, is season 182, episode 12. <laughs> there, so I think it's the same show. Do you watch that on Netflix? I, I watch it on, on my Hulu. old man cable. I just oh, put okay. it on HGTV. It's on but I watch it on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Yeah. I think my Hulu, mom was yeah. watching that. And there are seasons where... Like whole, I don't know what are listed as categorized as seasons. There'll only be like three cities. There'll be like four Austin episodes, like ten California episodes, and like two Oklahoma episodes. Yeah. But I've watched. I went through the summer and watched every Austin home show I could when I was trying to buy a house and just in my head. Mm -hmm. I may have seen that episode you're talking about. I don't Do know. they still uh -huh. make storage wars? I think so. 
I don't know, dude. That was a long time ago. We used to watch that. I think they do. Might be the last reality show I ever watched. I think they make <laughs> like a bunch of different ones now. Um, I used to watch like the first yep. season or two. Yeah. yeah. I, I do love with House Hunters though how it's like, oh, like this is uh, me and my husband are looking for a house. He's unemployed, and I sell jewelry at the farmers market on Sundays. <laughs> Uh, our budget is eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, the budget is like always every ridiculous. Fucking couple. I, I feel like it's in. I, I feel like in Austin in those shows, it's like I'm a electrical engineer and my wife is a professor, and our budget is two hundred fifty thousand dollars when we want to live downtown Austin. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. It's never. And then they're like, we found this house in Leander. It's close. Yeah. yeah. There's this a uh, million dollar condo downtown that you could. Uh... If you're Let's lucky, budget. Jesus. Let's budget a little bit. Fucking uh, Millie and my mom this summer watched. Have you guys ever watched Love It or <laughs> List It? Yes. That was on 24 hours a day in my house. Was Love that the it? show? Oh, right? yeah. Love It or List It. That's yeah. where you like. They can either accept the renovation or go buy the new house. Uh -huh. Yeah. So there's a realtor that shows them around to a yeah. bunch of new places How while some house is renovating. Of TV, do you guys watch every day? Uh, every day. On yeah. average. On average, I would say two two hours. I go with that. Probably around there. Or, I'll just, or uh, I'll, if you count like having it on, that'll happen sometimes too. Yeah, I'll, I like actively dip, watching probably on average too. I would mm. say probably more for me, but I view it as work, like research for because we talk so much, and I feel like it's good to be uh, well versed in pop culture. I watch a lot of things like for for that for work. Too. You watch stuff for work. Yeah. Um, I'll also preface it by I also because I don't want to be a lazy. <clears throat> Gross dude. I also ride a bike 20 miles a day every day minimum now. <laughs> I still don't know how and when you do that after work Millie and I rode 15 miles today. It's too hot though already it, this morning. It wasn't not at 9 a.m. Damn I if you start at like 7 a.m. <clears throat> on a Saturday you can be done by 10 you still have a whole day ahead of you You haven't gotten overheated and you it's like and I'm never gonna go to a gym or work out So I've started doing a thing now where because I used to try and sleep in as long as possible at the weekend because it's like the one day you can do that. How long could you? I don't ever sleep in really long. Maybe like 10 would be I the latest. Sleep but in now anymore, yeah. I've decided I'm going to wake up at like 6 or 5 every Saturday and Sunday and just have a really long weekend. And it's, it's great. It's, it's true. You get yeah. so much done. Yeah. But, but what time do you go to bed? Because you get tired a little earlier. Yeah, I start waning, but it's fine. You can still do stuff. Like 11. Yeah, midnight probably. That 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. time that you would have been asleep is more useful than the 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. time that you would have been awake. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. I also, it's also extra <clears throat> great this time of year because when you're up that early, it hasn't really gotten that hot yet. Like if if you wait to do stuff at night, it's still hot from the day. But if you're coming off like the end of the night, the beginning of the day, it's still cool. Well, not cool. It's as cool as it's gonna get, and you can get stuff done. Like I need to, I need to replace an outlet in my garage. And it's just too fucking hot to do it. It's like, I need to wake up one one weekend at like 5 a.m. and go do that. Because yeah. otherwise, it's, it's just too hot to go out and, and do that. Yeah, I went for a bike ride the other day on Thursday. It was like 114 <clears throat> degrees. It's like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. But it's it also been a very mild summer. We, I can't complain. It's I guess it's just has, recently yeah. gotten bad. I went down to uh, to Houston over the weekend. And I was shocked at how less hot it is there. Did you do that Halo Outpost event? Yeah. How was it? It was fun. It was good. Yeah. Well, did you see Megan Castro there? Yeah, ran into Megan Castro. Did you see Master Chief? <laughs> they actually <laughs> in the had flesh. a. I, I I didn't get to meet. I got to. See, I saw Steve uh, Downs, but I uh, didn't really get to talk to him. But they had an interesting exhibit where they showed the height of all the different Covenant, like a, like a scale outline of how oh, tall yeah, the like Covenant a grunt is. is. Like as tall as a human. Right? right, and a jackal is bigger than a human. It's like, oh well, I guess you play as Master Chief, and you're so much bigger that they look small. Yeah, that's but, why actually <laughs> I really liked about ODST is that they kind of. They make everything slightly taller. Right. So How? It was, it was, it was weird to see it in person and be like, oh. So yeah. who's the huge. tallest? Uh, like a brute? Hunter. A hunter? Oh, yeah, hunter, yeah. I think yeah. hunters are 12 feet tall. 12 feet tall, really? It's pretty funny. And they're all hunched over, too. Yeah, and because Master Chief's like seven feet tall, mm -hmm. so then it's like everything is scaled <clears> but it's to that. cooler in Houston? Yeah, it was like 10 degrees cooler in Houston. Because I always thought Houston was known for being very it was, humid. It was a little more humid, but I thought it was more comfortable there than it was here. Like, I sat outside for a little while there. It's like, I would never sit outside like this in Austin. Huh. In the middle of the day. It was... It was. We it was had fun. that uh, vicious circle, uh, vicious summer stream on Friday. <laughs> and fun. sitting... Uh, the first thing we did, we, we played the game first, and then the first activity was outside. And I think it like wiped everyone out. Yeah, they Instantly. they navigated away from outside really quickly. And, yeah, and Jack was like, I can't go back out there. I can't do it. And it I was, was like, I don't blame you, buddy. Yeah, you're not was... meant to be outside in general <laughs> with your skin. But <laughs> did you? Yeah, see... poor Chad. He's like, I didn't know we'd be outside. Didn't wear sunscreen today. Steve and Joe absolutely nailed those 
nug toss. That was just unbelievable. I thought. I feel like they've. Surely they must be practicing. <laughs> they. I. I feel like those guys have like weird human skills. Yeah. Like there's some people kind of <clears throat> like Jack. How he, it's like non-athletic abilities, but just like these skills. Like he's like fucking good at what's that game? Air hockey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And shit like that and poker. That was that was <laughs> poker's not really the same category. <laughs> good at useless stuff. That was really cool uh, on a personal level to see Joe here because Barats and Beretta was like hugely <laughs> influential to Rooster Teeth. <laughs> Lindsay like, was Lindsay was asking me. She was like, "Well, which one's Steve and which one's Joe?" And I was like, "That one's Steve. That one's Joe." You never seen Barats and Beretta? She's like, "Oh, I love Barats and Beretta." I was like, "That's Joe Beretta." She was like. I know. <laughs> what? It's like, it was so crazy because, like, I was, I was even telling Gavin one of the. I don't think you were there, but one of the early big fights we had. It wasn't a huge fight, but me, Matt, and Bernie got into a fight because Bernie left for a little while. This was downtown Buda, and Matt and I were making an episode, and we were way behind, and we we took like a break to watch an episode of Brass and Beretta, and Bernie came in right while we were watching it. And he was really <laughs> mad. And we all got into like this big yelling match between the three of us about whether we were being lazy or not. <laughs> Did he? Why was I not there? Ah, uh, because we were working. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why you weren't there. If maybe, Matt was there, I should definitely would have been. No, I know. It was here. like it was like around season four maybe of RBB. So you, maybe you were out of town. I might have been out of. It was like an, I something. remember it being like a fri- like late on a Friday night. Season four. Maybe I was with Jason like at a convention. Or you might have been. You might have yeah. been like because it would have been probably ten p.m. on a Friday night. So mm-hmm. you might have been. Yeah. Did he, had he asked you to do something? Or just... I don't remember <laughs> the specifics of it. That's part of why I didn't want to tell Joe. Uh, <laughs> I I, I kind of I wanted run down Bernie or Matt and see if they remember it. I just remember it being a really funny moment. And it was just really cool and gratifying, one of those things where it's like something that you were a fan of in early days that now suddenly yeah. your paths cross as peers almost. And They were so immensely successful right at the beginning of YouTube. Too soon. Yeah, it's too We soon. talked about this. Yeah. Wait, were you here? Well, like I, we talked about this with Bernie like last week or the week before. Oh, really? Uh, I think it was on Game Time. Hmm. About people who were big on, like right before, right as YouTube started and then like didn't get caught up in that wave of YouTube like people who were really big before YouTube was acquired by Google and then just kind of But a lot of them did really well behind the scenes on their own like you were Fred Figglesworth He actually had quite a career off, off of YouTube. Oh Fred He had a bunch of those TV shows on Nickelodeon wasn't I think he made I read about him a while back He made a boatload of money and did really well post YouTube wasn't Phil DeFranco one of the first YouTubers too or I guess first Big successful YouTubers because he's still going real when strong. When I think of like early ones, I think of like Justine. I think of Justine. And she's I think still of yeah. Shaytards. I think of like. What about Jenna Marbles? Yeah. She was pretty early on. She still has one of the most popular channels or to date. Grace was very early. <clears throat> um, Harley. Like Epic uh, Mealtime, yeah. I remember being one of the first. I feel like they weren't, in, they weren't immediate. Like they weren't. It wasn't super immediate, early, but it was yeah. like it was pretty early on. But I think like when we went to that YouTube meetup at San Diego Comic Con, remember all those years ago? Oh, hot for words, hot for words, and like uh, who was it? Like who else was there? Like all those people that were there, like that Mystery group. Guitar Man, yeah. and like those guys, right? Mystery Guitar Man is directing movies now. Yeah, with like real people in them. That's crazy. I don't want to call this person out, but um, during I I won't call them out. But during the live stream, Troy Baker was here. Uh huh. Um, and I've still never met him. Really? <laughs> no, you I don't have think told so. Me, I would have introduced you. I mean, I'd like, I would love to meet him. He seems like a lovely dude. He's but lovely. I don't, I'm not good at introducing myself to I'm people. I'm terrible at it. Yeah. Or or, or uh, putting myself in a position where I can be introduced. I just run the other way. Okay. Um, Gus and I are shy. We don't. Yeah. I'll force you on really you next time. We don't want to impose on anybody. And yeah. But um, he was here for the live stream, but he had to leave early to catch a flight. And there was a, a girl I was talking to, um, and this is a, a very sweet, kind girl. And he left, and and she's like, "What was his name again?" And I was like, "Troy." And she goes, "Troy." And I was like, "Yeah, Troy Baker." And she went. Are you fucking kidding me? Because he's wearing a retro replay shirt. Yeah. And apparently she had asked him, she's like, so what's your involvement in all this? And he went, oh, I make this show. And she's like, oh, cool, nice. Not familiar, but that's awesome. That was nice of him to say that, though. Yeah. Like, yeah, retro replay. Yeah. Repping his thing. And uh, she just felt so bad after. And I was like, I'm sure it's okay. That's He's not really the kind funny. of guy to be like, she didn't know who I was. That's <laughs> funny, dude. I thought that event went really well. And everybody seemed to have a genuinely good time. And there was no... It was like... I hesitate to put it in the same category as the uh, spring break and the family reunion because if it was kind of a different gig, but it felt different. It felt different, <clears throat> but it was it was more similar to the let's play party we had in England last year. Didn't care. Mm-hmm. You didn't do that one. Yeah, it was good. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I it was. It was I had a really people. good time off camera as well, like just chatting to everyone and. I had, shit. Yeah, I had a really fun time watching. For whatever reason, James and Adam were just being so fucking funny. 
throughout the day and the night, and I just yeah. watched them. From the other they side. were like, like hiding. The they were guys. hiding in the ferns and stuff <laughs> yeah. for a long time. Michael decided to put blue all around his mouth, <laughs> and my favorite thing was just watching Fiona yes. try and keep a straight. Like every time Fiona glanced Michael, she would just start tearing. I up know, dude. Laughter. I well, know. There was one point where she was looking at him and laughing. And I was like, "What's going on?" And she just pointed at Michael, and Michael was just like, <laughs> it was "He did that thing where his chin gets sunken into yeah. his neck, and it was just." My girlfriend actually made a uh, made a little uh, gif. I'll show you later, or an image that was. Uh, have you ever seen that Shitter's Full meme with the little girl with the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she remade it with Michael. It looks fucking great. Oh, fucking gross. Oh. Uh, you guys trying to get in the balloons was like my favorite part of the entire stream. Yeah, I don't know why they cut all the necks off him. Did uh, they? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that would have helped you guys. I feel like I've shoved Dan into like fifty balloons. We never cut the necks off. Yeah. Well, because they kept just going <laughs> deflating immediately. I don't know if you if you caught any of the stream. I was driving. No. But um, they they did it at Extra Life when they got in these giant balloons and like did a race where they hopped across the place to do something. Uh, they couldn't get a single person in. It went very room. wrong. With probably forty <laughs> minutes of trying, we got Christina. In. I saw. Yeah, I saw Christina get in. Then it burst and start choking her. I was. <laughs> Legitimately terrified for her. <laughs> That's why you cut the necks off. We did have a medic here, though. So. <sighs> that, that, yeah, I, I saw that part as, uh, as one of the highlights, mm -hmm. which was great. This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is also brought to you by Squarespace. Creating a website and online store is so much easier now thanks to Squarespace. Squarespace is a platform with everything you need to take control of your online presence and run your own business. We've been telling you about Squarespace for a long time because they're super awesome. Uh, I really like Squarespace templates. They're nice and clean and intuitive. Uh, plus, they're easy to customize. And best of all, anyone in my family can do it without having to ask me a lot of questions, which I really love and I'll bet you will too. Uh, every Squarespace template design supports all major content types, including pages, galleries, blogs, Commerce, calendars, and more. With Squarespace, get your message and work out into the world. Build your own subscriber base and email list. The tools to do it are all included and no plugins are needed. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash roosterteeth to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash roosterteeth for 10% off your first purchase. All right, last time, uh, you know, we asked you guys to share with us your Squarespace created websites. And we've gone through, picked some of our favorites. And as a reminder, with Squarespace, you too can make sites like this. So be sure to tweet at us with the hashtag RT Squarespace, and uh, you might see yours here on the podcast. So first up, we have uh, at Zach Pancoast, obviously a recording mixing engineer. Uh, next up, we have <laughs> at Menj.wood, Menj.wood. I'm sorry, I'm sure I butchered your name, uh, but obviously woodwork. And finally, we have Anthony Bandu. So thanks so much for showing us your sites. Thanks for uh, using Squarespace. Thanks for supporting the episode of uh, the Rooster Podcast. Um, yeah, good time. Uh, I, haven't, I, didn't, I haven't had a chance to play. I was out of town over the weekends, but I haven't hopped on to Vicious Circle. Maybe I'll play that a bit tonight, You guys too. won the whole thing, right? <coughs> Blue team? Yeah. Because, yep. obviously. Fuck it. Mainly because of Steve and Joe's... And because of that final <coughs> round. Who was it that had that crazy final round? Oh, that was um, someone on the red team. Yeah. I forget his name. I don't remember who Gom. it was. Gom? Gom? Yeah. Oh, it was Gom. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, he won five in a row. He won oh, every he's, round. Yeah, he's really good at video games. Yeah, he is. What uh, games? Ryan thought up a good game. I thought we were going to take it because Ryan, and then he got his ass kicked by Alfredo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I, was, uh, I thought I was really good at that game until uh, we released it. And then <laughs> yeah. I started playing on Steam with other people. It's like, oh, no, I'm actually garbage at this game. Yeah, like, I, I got all over again. I got yeah. really excited because I, I won my first round in Vicious Circle. And still to this day, the only one I've ever won. And it just, I died instantly and then became the Little Dipper, which is the most fun thing to play as, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, in the game. I just love how fast it moves. But I got someone, invaded their body, and then they were right by the evac zone. And they had 75 nuggets. And right. I was just like Stepped in over. it, like doing this thing where I'm like, am I going to do it? <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that Halo Reach game type or three with the skulls. We had to get the ten skulls. Headhunter. Headhunter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that what it's called? Mm -hmm. I think that was what it's called. I think that was what it's called. Yeah. yeah. I played. Uh, I played Griffball at that Halo event for the oh, first yeah. time in a few years. It, it had been a while since I played. I got fucking destroyed by Jack. Dude, the people that play Griffball, they ruined it for me. <laughs> They're really good. I know they got so much like it's like, but we made this, and like two days later, people are like, "No, you suck. Get get out of the way." Yeah, it's, it's hard to play. We, with we were all the best in the world, and then people like Andrew Patton showed up and flowers, and it was just like, "I'm never playing this again." It's oh, flowers! <laughs> we we flowers. About flowers. Yeah, good lord. That, he he had a move where he would like hammer jump backwards and fly through the air. We just called it flowersing because yeah, he was the one who started doing that. Yeah, you. There were people that just like fly. Yeah, you just never touch the ground. Yep, it's pretty insane. 
Yeah, it's uh, you spend all that time working on something and then you just suck at it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you release it to the general populace and you realize that you are mediocre at best at everything you do. Yeah, how do, how do you much. think uh, August, August went, Gus? I thought it went good. Um, no I last some... of Gus this year. No, it's a... Uh... Because you guys like the word between it's been uh, several years since it came out. I mean, maybe when Last of Us 2 comes out eventually, we can play it again. I'm still sad you didn't do July. We could do it. <laughs> July <laughs> in September. <laughs> uh, it was fun. It was it was it was really fun to to play with you guys. Except the it, it was weird. The first one that we taped was that Trouble in Terrorist Town. I oh was, yeah, I was just it's very confusing. So <laughs> overwhelmed and confused that entire game. I was like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> You should join us again for another one. Maybe you'll be. Is there anyone as widely loved in the Achievement Hunter audience outside Achievement Hunter other than Gus? Uh, I will say I saw a couple of comments that uh, I'm just repeating what I saw that <laughs> said uh, the Gus month was way better than Bernie month. I so. did see that too. I wasn't going to bring it up, but <laughs> you know. I'm glad you did. <laughs> just I, re I read every comment. I saw those too. Also, I read a really bizarre comment on Vicious Circle the other day where somebody com his complaint was that the Little Dipper moves too slow and it's too hard to get around the map. Oh no, the Little Dipper's so oh, fast. Is that thing use your yeah. uh, and I right feel like they, button. I feel like they expanded the the reach yeah. on those things. Oh, you can yeah. really, anywhere, you can really, really fly with that thing. It's really fun. I like, no, dude, I hope you know you have an open invitation to come in and film with Achievement Hunter whenever you, you want to do it. Oh, it does. <laughs> <laughs> when, does Last of Us 2 have a release date yet? Uh, I don't know. The fucking Gamescom stuff's going on right now. I wonder if they released it. We Last got, of Us 2. We so good at Last of Us. What? Did this just get announced today? Does it have a date? Bum, bum, no, bum. no, no, no. That, that's that's uh, Death Stranding. What the f They can't do that. <laughs> What's the... <laughs> it's like they, they made it seem like it was the Last of Us 2 release date, but it was a Death Stranding release date. What and is so, that game about? I don't know, but they announced today that you can pee in that game. Cool. Like, d like, do you have to pee, or like, you I can't don't know. Pee? And if enough people pee in the same place, it makes mushrooms grow. Like, is it like The Sims? <laughs> I don't a... know. <laughs> Sorry, was the last game? There was a, there was a woman breastfeeding a ghost baby. Was she peeing there? <laughs> is there? Is it gonna multiplayer? I think it's like a weird multiplayer where you don't interact with everyone directly, but it's kind of like a shared space kind of thing. Because your horse could dump in Metal Gear Five, right? Yes, and you could weaponize it. Yeah. Have we, yeah. have we done a top 10 games you can piss in before? Uh-uh. We've done Postal. top 10 grossest toilets. Postal 2. We I should definitely do a video where it's, if we can, where it's just us standing in a circle pissing on something. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Jack mushrooms. or... <laughs> like in between the games See if we can grow mushrooms on somebody. <laughs> so the rumor is Last of Us 2 is May 2020? But that's just rumor. So okay. we, we, can, we, can, we can spend a few months getting good and then do another August. Oh, the so multiplayer. between May and August we'll be training. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be in training. You Barbara, just... if you wanted to come do a month of Achievement Hunter, what games would you want? What four or five games would you want to do? Oh, man, I don't know. The Sims? Hey. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Think about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure we could figure it out. We played Horse once. We did. That was actually, I think, one of the first Achievement Hunter videos I ever did. Maybe the first was a Horse the ones with You. Did. You're horsing around? I've done at least two or three horse appearances back when we did horse. I feel like I might have done one or two other ones. We did that pretty sweet heist collab the other day. Yeah. Dude, that worked out so well. That's like one of my favorite things we've done in recent I actually history. had Millie watch it. This was one of the rare moments where I'm like, you should watch a Rooster video. Yeah. It's a journey when you watch all three back to back. Yeah. Fuck it. Chad's just getting inundated with people being like, we should have taken the taco, man. <laughs> and he's like, I know! Oh, Chad. <laughs> Chad is We're probably the least deserving of that happening. We all knew it was going to happen. We all knew that there was going to be a double cross. There's I don't also, know why it came as a surprise. There was something that we didn't put in the video because uh, it wasn't needed, but we locked Sam in that cage and we came back and he wasn't there. That was in the video. But as a follow-up, we couldn't <clears> find <throat> Sam the rest of the day and then I get a slack from Sam that just says, hello, Barb. And then the next slack said, I want to play a game. And I'd, I haven't heard from him since. <laughs> so I, I, I you don't know what... I haven't seen him. <laughs> Has anyone seen Sam since then? Dude, if there's a corpse in that cage somewhere. Did he meld into the, into the building? Let He's like, see. his spirit is here. I, let me see what else he said. It was fucking creepy as shit. You, you sent a screenshot of that. Yeah, he said, uh, 
hello, Barb, I want to play a game. And I said, I hate this. And then he just said, LOL. And I said, it was Chad's idea. And he said, oh, I believe you. I do, really. And then I just didn't hear from him again after that. How about this? I, f I identify a bunch of really stressful co-op games, two-person co-op games. And then I start a new series where you and Trevor have to play together, and it's called Couples Therapy. Didn't you already do something like that? Did I? I did a show called Relationship Goals with My Ex-Wife, but oh. obviously my, I, f I fucked that up because we got divorced. I, I, think, uh, I think we did pretty <laughs> but well But this is that. your relationship I'm screwing with now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> I think we could stand it. Okay. I think we can stand the we'll test. See what I can, see what you I can should find. do like uh, those. You should find all the games where you have to share the controller, like Cookies and Cream or Overcooked, where it's like two people playing on one controller. Oh god. Yeah, Cookies, cookies and Cream would be perfect for that. Yeah. Or like uh, Keep Talking, Nobody Explodes. Mm. But if the bomb blows up, both of you have like a prize possession that gets blown up. The problem is I'm so shit at video games. <laughs> I <laughs> cannot cool. stress that enough. Well, Keep Talking, Nobody Explodes would be perfect for that. Yeah, because it's just about communication. Oh. We're pretty good at that. Yeah, and then I put like your laptop and Trevor's favorite pair of shoes or something in like a <laughs> can. We'll just douse it with lighter fluid, and then we'll set it on fire if you guys fail. Sounds good. My laptop's Rooster Teeth's laptop, so I'm down for that. Okay, well we'll, we'll find a car. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> we should find a way to make it automatic. Yeah, like like so no one has to do it. But it's like as soon as the game reaches a fail state, like it sends a a, a signal and it yeah, yeah, destroys absolutely. whatever the thing is. Why would no one do it? What? You said we have to make it automatic. Why would like no one want to do it? No, that no, way it's like so there's it's... no way to stop it or no one no one feels guilty about it. About yeah. like, oh I have to destroy your things. Like, no, it's like if you fail, then it automatically it was your failure that causes it to be destroyed. Guilty. Yeah. Mm. I love it. Who who is this? Uh Hobnoblin in chat says maybe coopples therapy. Oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Couple therapy's fine. Coopple. <laughs> <laughs> Coopple. Not everything has to be clever. Everything has to be a pun. If I'm involved, <laughs> it's not true. That's what one, one of my favorite parts of that heist was when we had the GoPro in Chad's office, and Blaine says, "This means war." It's like a funny reaction, but all the comments are like, "Oh, Blaine, don't, don't do it, don't start." Dude, <laughs> somebody wrote a fucking novel about what our response would be. Have you read that? No. Should we do it? Can I read? <laughs> yeah, it's going to take a while. Or our response. Let me. Because you guys continue the conversation. Uh, conversate. I'll find. I think it would have been really cool in that. Did you see the videos? Yeah. The host, I, it would. How cool would it have been if we just had a drone above the car park <laughs> and you could see all these little groups of people running in different directions? It would have been so funny. Speaking of drone, have you guys seen Good Boys yet? No. Nah. No. Uh, I watched it yesterday. It's it pretty good? fucking funny. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, the whole movie's about a drone. That's why I ask. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, we, um, we need to have drones flying all the time. That way, it's never suspicious. Well, we had that thing where we <laughs> were a constant. We were doing that let's play announcement with all the different let's play families, and a drone just came down in the middle of the shoot, and uh, then it took off, and no one knew whose drone it was. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, cool, we got drone shots." And Blaine, who was directing, I was like, mm -mm, "Did you see we have any drones?" And it just left. I was like, "Well, who's?" It was like flying around us. We were just like, "Oh, sweet, that's the drone." <laughs> like, Weird. That? Did you see that clip of uh, some guy's drone dying over a lake? Yeah, and he oh, like. Runs into the lake and starts swimming, swimming and like perfectly catches it just in time. It's really cool. That's uh, that's dedication to save a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, oh, you go find it. it? No, you go. You uh, go right speaking ahead, of speaking there. of which, the other day, um, I got a piece of uh, a piece of mail, and uh, it it looked like junk mail. You mm. know, it was, it was very looked in a white envelope, had no real discerning information on it. Especially you didn't rip it up right away. I normally do, but I decided to open it. And it was a, a check from a class action lawsuit settlement <gasps> for four hundred and eight dollars. Whoa! I, I thought was like, going to say like sixteen cents. Yeah, normally it's like a, a tiny little amount. I was like, holy shit! I didn't even know that I was part of this thing. I guess like some store that I bought two shirts from years ago. They weren't even expensive shirts. Had like a class action lawsuit against them, and I was part of it automatically. That's and a lot of money. I got four hundred. Right. I was like. Holy Did shit! Did everyone who shopped there during that time period? I get don't that? know. So like, I don't know anything about it other than I got a check in a white envelope for four hundred eight, four hundred and eight dollars, and I was just blown away. Was it Are real? you sure you didn't send yeah. a loan? You in put your it name? in, it went through. I deposit. It's fine. It's <gasps> it's been like a week. I'm That's not, so cool. It's yeah. not like one of those checks. We talked about this on the podcast the other those week. Fake checks. Like a check that you once you deposit it, you now owe this company. It's like a uh, starts a loan uh -huh. in your name. How's that work? Don't you have to like sign something to start a loan? I don't. I don't know how it works, but it, I don't buy it. it. People get scammed out of shit all the time. This was uh, an actual thing. So if you ever are uh, invited to join in a class action lawsuit, I guess join it. Every now and then, you might get a check for uh, for a new video game console or a new graphics card. <laughs>
Dude, that's awesome. I feel like yeah, I would, I I would try and spend that money. I'd be like, oh, this is well, it's my like special. It's like, you know, I gotta find something. Yeah, don't just put it in the pool. Right, it's like, I've gotta find something that's $408. Yeah, something to be that like, you wouldn't have bought right. if you had that check. It's like, that is because of the, the stupid lawsuit. <laughs> because I bought two shirts five years ago or something. You should just buy 50 shirts with it. <laughs> the same store. It was so weird. How much do you weigh? Like 10, 11 stone? Well, like 140 five pounds or something okay why i want to deadlift you oh not, I not right now you did what 165 have, 165 is now my i don't have handles though. five reps well i was i was trying to think about this how to do it like and we could find maybe like straps. a bar or something that you could like wrap yourself around <laughs> i'm not a snake what do you mean <laughs> like you could hold on to a bar and i could hold on uh. to a bar so i'm not lift like i'm lifting you plus the bar but i would just be on the floor if i was holding a bar exactly then it well, then I would lift you, but you'd be hanging onto the bar. Well, how, I mean, how high are you? Are you like on a, on a, the roof or something? No, it's just like weightlifting, dude. What the fuck are you imagining? Why would she be on <laughs> the I'm roof? If I'm hanging on a bar. You're not hanging this way. You're like. You're laying down with a bar. Like, imagine your legs and arms. <laughs> like you're one of those, uh, uh, like if I'm cooking a pig. Spit roast? Yeah. So you're going to spit, you're going to shove up a, <laughs> a pole up my ass and lift me up. She wants to do that. I know what that, that is. Then what do you think that's on the I'm roof? Not, I'm How not on a You know what I'm talking How about. I'm, I'm showing you a picture of someone deadlifting. Is he on a roof? He's on the fucking ground. How did you get on the roof from this? I, mean, I can't hang on a bar sideways. Like, what, what do you, you want? want? You're just what holding on to it. Like, I'm just what do you think you're going to hold on like this and deckle under it? So I'm just like. Like your legs like and your. Like this. Yeah. Like You this. cross your arms. There you go. I don't think it would be. Uh, I think it would be top heavy on this end. You wouldn't be able to do it. Mm. One arm would have yeah, a heavier you'd have, lift. Yeah, you'd have to like find a way to evenly distribute Gavin's weight. Yeah. The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance returns to the world of Thra with an all-new adventure. When three Gelflings discover the horrifying secret behind the Skeksis' power, they set out on an epic journey to ignite the fires of rebellion and save their world. From Jim Henson Studios, this series is an epic prequel series to the beloved 1982 Henson film, The Dark Crystal, with characters voiced by a star-studded cast, including Taron Egerton, Andy Samberg, Kate McKinnon, Helena Bonham Carter, Eddie Izzard, and more. Uh, I'm sure you know Lindsay and Barbara went to San Diego Comic-Con in July for an adventure filled with their own Dark Crystal transformations and a visit to the Netflix booth. Uh, you can check it all out when the video comes out on August 24th on Roosterteeth.com and on August 25th on the Roosterteeth YouTube channel. And make sure you watch The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance on August 30th, only on Netflix. It's coming up really soon. I figured it out. It okay. took a long time. I don't know if, if the... It's, uh, you guys are deadlifted now. I don't know if you guys want to circle back around to this. Yeah, no, I would just fill in time All for right, you. This is what somebody's response... This is Whispering Oracle two days ago on Reddit's response to Blaine's going to get revenge on us and the efficacy of whether <laughs> Blaine would be able to enact revenge on us. And his response is... <clears throat> it's, it's almost like a college thesis. The problem is Achievement Hunter sort of falls into the usual uh, me, m me against my brother, my brother and I against our cousin, the three of us against a stranger mentality, or the old trope about never breaking up a fight between two brothers. They're more than likely to turn on each other until the outside threat exists. Then they'll immediately ally and be loyal to each other to take out the interloper. Age would be more than willing to prank Matt or Jeremy or Gavin if it was their own idea, but the moment that suggestion comes from outside, they'd be far more likely to side with their own against that person, whether it would be just a, well, you can never trust Blaine, this is a setup situation, or you're just not allowed to prank Matt, only we can prank Matt situation. That's correct. Uh, it would very likely be difficult for anyone, any outside force to split them up via mind games, <coughs> because you gotta... We're not smart enough for mind games. In your example, Blaine would try. Uh, it's a dumb example. You don't need that. Anyway, the other problem going uh, after it is Achievement Hunters. They have so many more members than most of the other groups in Rich Teeth. Don't forget, strength in numbers. Uh, most of whom are kind of insane. Achievement Hunter is always going to have the advantage of numbers in most cases, combined with the fact that they, are ve they have very long memories and will never <laughs> forgive or forget. Even if you do somehow manage to prank them, all you've done is guarantee that you'll spend the next few months or years living in fear of whatever terrible retribution that will eventually be cooked up to punish you. He's not wrong. That is really I just responded, well I just responded accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very well thought out <laughs> reply. Yeah. That's great. I hope you I hope you got a good grade. Yeah, it's true. We always like at each other's throats, like bickering and that. And I, as, as soon as something threatened the department, I feel like we'd all be like, Pfft. "No, we'd absolutely." Like, it's, 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 I mean, it's it's the same with any of us, I guess. Any groups of friends, yeah, or siblings, or yeah, what that guy said. And even in like concentric circles within inside the group, like I would 
fuck with Gus to defend you, but if anybody from outside tried to fuck with Gus, I'd kill them. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, I might pick I might pick Gus over either of you. I don't know. I would I guess my loyalties lie with you. That's fair. Let's find out right now. That's fair. All um, right. Use this uh, little thing. The shark guy. Oh god. I saw Eric play with it before we started. He lost again. I think it, it looked like his most painful loss. He lo- Does it he, hurt? I was some, bleeding. Like, what do you mean lost it? Why You're bleeding? You, why There's some tax it? in it. Do you want to play? Oh. Do you want to play? No. Don't play it. You sure? Eric always loses though. That is not hygienic. Yeah, it's not hygienic. <laughs> oh, don't start it. Don't do I'll, it. I'll play. You want me to you want to play? Don't play. Don't. And it just I think Jeff wants to play. How bad does it hurt? It's not, you know. Why don't you find out? It'll make you bleed. What do I do? Oh, you yeah. play, play with that. Push your tooth down. Yeah, each person takes a turn pushing down a tooth. So get your finger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it would get? I think it like my hand or something. Look. look. Ready? Yeah. No, you do one. Does it ever go on the first one? one? I'm yeah, sure I think it does. So, yeah. Do it. No, you do one. Press it. You press the tooth. Pick your tooth and press it. Press the tooth. Is it always the second one? No. Am I gonna <laughs> no, it's not. Blaine, give me to press the tooth. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Press, no, no, no. Press, no. Press, press it. Push it. Tooth, press the tooth. Press the tooth. Oh my god. Go, 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 go. Oh, you just reset it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> go, 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 go. Yeah. Okay, go. You got it. Oh my Blaine's god. Blaine's dragging out. Like he's it's gonna slice him. Oh. Go, 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 go. No, you Fuck this, dude! Okay. <laughs> oh my god! Guts, 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 guts! Oh. Okay. Go. Oh, 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 oh no! That's not all left. God! Oh, god. Oh, god. Oh, god. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> it's so powerful. That's terrifying. Let me know if anyone else wants to play. Oh, I did hate you, that thing so much. Did you hear us talking about you, Blade? We were oh, saying good not. stuff. The heist. What'd you say? Talk oh, about nice. the heist. Good times. Yeah. Uh, apparently, there's a whole. Uh, I was just. I was reading somebody's. Uh, there was a, a thread on Reddit that was discussing whether you could or would get revenge on us and the wisdom of that. I was just reading somebody's like treatise about it. You got plans? Blake? And it's very accurate. I mean, you you saw my follow up to Chris's Star Wars prank where I took him to a like a Scarface mansion and had him swatted. Yeah, so. we saw that. <laughs> Blaine doesn't mess around. Mic drop. Don't drop the mic. That's a very <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, Eric, you, oh, come on. Eric, you didn't lose that game. All right. I lost. <laughs> There's a soundboard, right? That, no, that was him. <laughs> Who can tell? Yeah, first one. Baby. That was a soundboard. <laughs> I hate it so much. I love it. I, love it. I, I hated it, it first, and now I love it. Um, so, uh, have, did you see that really weird story last week about this? Person who's been caught like on surveillance camera. I think it's in Virginia. It's in Virginia. Yeah, who? Wears an old tube TV on his head <gasps> and at yes. night he goes around and leaves TVs on people's porches and like waves at the camera Tube TVs or flash tube TVs. Okay so well, no. does he get them all? N- Nobody knows and apparently uh, the footnote in the story is it also happened last year and like at the sa- same time like the second or third week of August, <laughs> he just shows up and starts leaving oh, TVs. Okay. So it is his head. I thought he had it on top of his head. No, no his, his head, head is a TV. So this guy have... is just like a performance artist. That's brilliant. Unless he's, are there bombs in the TVs or anything? No, no, they're just tube TVs. Like I, do I... they work? I don't know. I do think, think so. How think... many has? How many has he done? Uh, let's see. <laughs> it's like there was like a third member of Daft Punk who got kicked out of the band. Yeah. <laughs> and now uh, he just does that. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like it's just. In a neighborhood, so not like a ton, but did oh, wait, wait. Uh, he outdated boxes caught? were found at more than fifty homes. Oh my god! And they don't know who it is. No, and I'm... apparently, like I said, he did it last year, and he did did it again this year. What if he's just some dude who's got a big ass garage to clean out? And he doesn't know what to do with it all. <laughs> That's what some people were complaining. It's yeah, like we don't know what to do with these TVs. Well, probably yeah. what happens Dumping. is they bring him to Goodwill, and then he just picks them back up from Goodwill. Everybody's gonna throw these fucking TVs away, and then they're gonna find out it was Banksy, and each TV is worth ten billion dollars. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Oh, smart. Yeah, hold on to those TVs. <laughs> so, Would you be mad if you so fucking weird if you had a TV on your doorstep? Well, I'd be confused, and then I would look at surveillance footage, and I'd be even more confused. But would you keep the TV? No, I'd probably think there was. Something, something in it or something bugged. wrong, right? Like something's fucked up with it. Yeah, it's that would creep weird. me out. 
big time. Like, yeah. I, I see the humor in it from afar like this. But if it was me that it was happening to, I'd be like, ah, fuck that, dude. Wow, it's just we just, <laughs> just one one time wouldn't be that bad. We also live in a city that had package bombings too. <coughs> yeah, so. that was like Might a year a little, ago. Yeah, about Maybe, a year ago. Yeah, about a year. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, that's weird. There that was, was that bad. guy who was arrested at Peace Park last week. Did you hear about that? No. Oh, he had a gun. He had more than a gun. He had a handgun, a baton, a rifle, and a bipod for the rifle and a scope. Oh, oh. and an extra magazine of. Uh, uh, bullets for what the, the, the rifle. I think he was about to do a mass shooting. And, yeah. Where's Peace Park? Uh, it's just left of, west of campus off Lamar, like uh, between like 29th and 35th. And I think he had 36th. a warrant out. Yeah, so yeah, he had a warrant. And he, he hid the rifle in some bushes. So he took the cops to the bushes and was like, hey, I hid a rifle here. Why did, loaded AR-15. Why did he tell them? He's a fucking crazy person. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, no explaining that guy. Fuck, action. dude, I ride my bike through there like Eight, 12 times a week. <laughs> Wait, maybe you saw him. I may have. Yeah, it's just so weird. And he got arrested? Yeah, I guess he had, like you said, someone, I think Kevin said, he had a warrant for his arrest out in uh, in Houston already. <coughs> so they had arrested him because I guess, I think out of everything he was carrying, I think it was the baton was illegal. Well, because the gun was in a bush. The irony. Of that <laughs> so it's is like insane. they arrested him for that and then he had the outstanding warrant in Houston. Oh my God. Which, which is so weird. But I think we like uh, a bunch of laws are coming into effect in. In Texas, September first, but it, it wasn't some weird social experiment like the dude that took all the guns to Walmart or he, whatever. He doesn't look like a social experiment kind of guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. Does he look like a white dude in his twenties? <laughs> yeah, he does. Interesting. I think I think you nailed it. Interesting pattern. Yeah. So weird. Um, that's that's a very strangely specific Austin story. Yeah, dude. That's I, did, scary. I hadn't heard about that. That's... Do you hear? Do you hear that the uh, pitch and putts closing down? They already had their last day. It's yeah. over. Well, I think they're, down. they're changing ownership, right? Like, no. Oh, it's just going to be gone? They were, they, there was a petition to get them, they're going to put condos or something <clears> there. <throat> they're going to develop it. I'm pretty sure. What's it called? Butler Park? Butler Park, yeah. The was it family place, owned place had for been like there 80 for years. Oh, it was 80? 70, 70 or 80 years, yeah. We used to go there all the time uh, back in the day. It's like this, have you ever been there? No. Nah. It's this little park like off of Riverside and Lamar. Like, you know, there used to be that Tal Cabana there, and then it's like right behind there. It's like right the, next to Peter Pan Pitch and Putt. Yeah, there's yeah, a tiny bunch. little park, and uh, it was like a nine-hole golf course. It's a nine-hole Pitch and Putt You could course. rent, you rented like a little wedge and a putter from them. And you could walk around and with a cooler of beer and just like <laughs> hit golf balls for the fun of it. Like, and it wasn't like, it's like competitive. Of, oh, it wasn't scoring? I mean, there, it was like threes? whatever you wanted. Hmm. You know, you like, it, it didn't yourself. matter. Like, yeah. you didn't have to worry about getting in someone's way. It was just like, if you just want to go drink beer and... Like fake hit golf balls in it's like a little a, golf course. It was a cool little place to go do that. Just a little par three, you know. It was awesome. I think uh, when I was living downtown, I went probably I don't know six times in the last two years before it closed down. I didn't. It was. It was really sad because that's a. I mean, I get it. That land has got to be super valuable, mm -hmm. but it was such an iconic old piece of Austin. And even I don't know if you remember this, but remember they had that family of hawks that will come and yeah. land. Like the last time I was there which was maybe eight months ago, on the final hole, the hawk came and just landed and watched. I'd never seen it before, and it watched the whole fucking thing. It was so cool and so neat to be able to see it, like, four feet away from you, just watching you play golf. Mm -hmm. And I was bummed that it's leaving. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. I, I always get, uh... Whenever I see a really big hawk, I always get nervous that they're going to take my dog. Yeah, dude. Because <laughs> I have small dogs, and it's like, oh, they, they could easily <laughs> grab my dog and fly off with it. He's on a leash, though, isn't he? Not in my backyard. That's fair. But I'm out there with them. <laughs> so whenever I see a big hawk, I'm like, oh, we have to go. Come on, let's go inside. So I have to like call the dogs back in. I they feel like your dogs could fend off a hawk. No. <laughs> they would have no idea what the hell happened. Get attacked from the air. They're pretty feisty. Can they really lift up that much weight? I think so. I think you hear yeah. about like chihuahuas getting taken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're like hawk. rats. Yeah, that's true. Uh, How much do your dog weigh? 13 uh, pounds? Oswald is smaller. That than might be a little heavy. But I don't know. I saw a bald eagle in Oregon uh, like swoop down and get a piece of like a mouse or something in a park I was at and that that fucking thing is up close is huge mm -hmm. you do not want to screw with a bald eagle it could definitely lift 13 pounds uh, let's see. I'm trying to see how much a hawk can pick up um <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I really what's its carbon it. footprint though what's it, probably a lot lower than uh <laughs> than beef than a quarter pounder with cheese yeah that was an in interesting idea 680 burgers for around 680 quarter pound burgers. So what is that? So 680 divided by four. Did anyone that's else? That's uh, 170 pounds of beef. 
How many nuggets do you guys think it's like you a, ate? Over a human of beef. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I had one when I first got when they first got there, and it was delicious. And then as the nuggets started to cool, I they. <laughs> That's they, something that would not fly. They, they lost they their, their flavor. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> oh, Master Chef. Yeah. We had yeah. three thousand chicken McNuggets, and I, I uh, three thousand nuggets. Six, sorry, three thousand nuggets. I had probably <laughs> six of them. Yeah. And I think I finished. Four. I was sick the next day. From yeah. Where, where did the rest? How of many did you have? Been them? I didn't eight, have dude. that many, but I think it's just like I'm not used to eating those. Mm. So when you do it, it just like messes with your body. I also shoved a bunch in my mouth. I didn't eat those, but I think that made me sick. <laughs> really? From contact? Yeah. They're just very. It's it's a lot of like it makes you feel real bloated, and kind of like lethargic. Mm -hmm. The other day, speaking of uh, old Austin stuff, uh, the other day on the Austin subreddit, someone posted a question. They were like. Did there used someone posted and they wrote? Did there used to be a top notch where the P Terry's is over like a thirty third and Lamar? Uh, no, it was Hilberts. It was Hilberts. It was definitely Hilberts. Yeah, but I thought it was weird, like how quickly people forget that. <clears throat> yeah. Like it was Hilberts not that long ago. It was Hilberts for fucking fifty years. Right. It's, it's been like, and P Terry's for eight. If that. If that. Yeah. It was. It was weird how nobody remembered, and then someone was like, "Look, I found this." Picture from Google Street View. It's like, yeah, it's obviously Hilberts. I didn't. They didn't top notch buy the oven or like the the the, the stove top. Did they from Hilberts that Hilberts and move it over to? I felt like, I feel like I read I don't that. Remember, I don't remember like they that. moved some equipment from Hilberts to Top Notch. It's possible. I don't yeah, remember. it was a while ago. I've been wanting to go to Top Notch lately. I haven't been there in a long. I haven't been there in a time. long time. I go to Hilberts mm -hmm. usually like once a week or so. I don't go that often. I get uh, well because of keto. I don't go that much anymore. But I used to get their strawberry shake a lot. I really like their shake. Mm -hmm. That Hilberts by the office. But yeah, that Hilberts by the office takes forever. It's not that long. Oh, every time I'm in the drive-through, it's like I might as well just. I should have brought a folding chair. No, it doesn't <laughs> uh -huh. take that long. You're exaggerating. Do you uh -oh. order something special? Bacon cheeseburger. Mm. Yeah. Do you feel like it takes a long time? You go there too. I've been there twice. Oh, okay. And I ate inside the restaurant, so yeah. I don't know. I have no experience with the drive-thru. Can you divide the amount of burgers by the time on the plane? So how many burgers per... So 680 burgers. Let's say it's a 10-hour flight. Yeah. So you're doing 68 burgers an hour. So a little over a burger a minute. You can do it. It's a lot. <laughs> Imagine on a plane, you have to eat one burger every minute. Like before, <laughs> Otherwise the plane would crash. Before you <laughs> land in London, you need to eat these 680 <laughs> hamburgers. Now here's the problem. Obviously it makes <clears throat> way more sense for you to save the environment by and reduce carbon fiber by not taking that flight. Right? Yeah. But... We also acknowledge with 7 billion people in the world, if you don't take that flight, somebody else will. That plane's still flying. So you probably should just stop eating hamburgers. I might. You can actually affect change that way. Yeah, I've been just... Especially if you're going to places that are made with, to order. Just unhappy with the amount of... Like, cause try, like try Uber to everywhere, too. Though. Uber's worse than just driving. Because mm. the car has to drive to you before you get in. Oh, true, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to do something. It's a nightmare. Just start, all, the, all the Beyond Meat stuff's really good. I mm. I just like vegetables are fucking awesome. The older I get, the less I like meat in general. That's I mean, I still lie. eat meat. Don't get me wrong, but man, Vid Vid Vidalia onions are in season right now. I fucking love Vidalia onions. They're sweet as fuck, dude. And uh, was it, at Whole Foods, I kept seeing uh, Japanese yams. Those are so fucking good. Really, They're super sweet. How do you eat awesome. them? Awesome. Normally, what I'll do is uh, I do them a couple of different ways. The way I like the best is I'll cut them into thin rounds and then just grill them. Mm -hmm. Stick them on the grill for. 10 minutes or so, <clears throat> dude. Uh, they're awesome. I did this thing the other night that you may want to try, especially if you want to eat healthier. Uh, I got a spaghetti squash, and I cooked it for about 40 minutes. And then, uh, well, I, yeah, for about 40, 20 minutes to, yeah, about 40 minutes. And then I made this uh, mixture of ricotta and mozzarella and Parmesan and onions and mushrooms and basil and marinara sauce. And then I just filled that into the... Uh, cut open spaghetti squash and then um, bake it for another 20 minutes with some Parmesan on top and mm -hmm. then it's just like eating spaghetti because you know spaghetti squash shreds yeah. like spaghetti yeah, you just, yeah, it's yeah. so delicious and healthy it's, oh, it's phenomenal you ever made buffalo cauliflower? I haven't but I've had it before I don't like buffalo sauce what? I don't that's why I don't eat wings I mean, what is in that sauce? sauce? it tastes like diesel fuel <laughs> where, where did you eat the buffalo sauce that tastes like diesel fuel. It smells like diesel. It's like, ugh, I can't take it. It's a little strong. <laughs> yeah. How does it share like it. any... That's, that's it be does the same thing unreal. to my nose. All it, all it is is Frank's Red Hot and butter. Ugh. I don't know. Which I, do you not like? You Frank's like Red Frank's Hot or I don't like Frank's Red Hot. I just learned something about you today. Yeah. I thought you did. No. No, I don't. 
So buffalo sauce is sauce and butter. Yeah, that's all it is. All right. I didn't know that either. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that. Yeah, it's you said what's in buffalo simple. sauce. I someone, could not tell you. Someone told me the other day that gin was vodka. What? Didn't know that. Who said that? And why are they so wrong? <laughs> they said it was like flavored vodka, like vodka. No, no. no. I told you that. It's totally. It's a different alcohol. Who said? <laughs> well, why is gin? Why is gin? Made believe from? them. Uh, um, yeah, well, I, I don't know. Well, it's made it from, gets but its, it's flavor from juniper, juniper berries, but I think it's a corn whiskey, isn't it? Or a corn alcohol, corn um, alcohol, not whiskey. But. Who told you that? What? I don't remember. Gin. I remember being like, "Huh?" Or grapes? Distilled gin. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, what makes <laughs> vodka? I'm trying to. I'm going to compare and contrast it. I got it right here. Vodka. Most vodka today is produced from grains such as sorghum, corn, rye, or wheat. Some vodkas are made from potatoes, molasses, soybeans, grapes, rye, sugar beets, sometimes byproducts of oil refining or wood pulp process. They're, not, they're in no way related. Distilled gin is produced exclusively by redistilling ethanol of agricultural origin with an initial strength of 96% ABV. Uh, mm. In still Alcohol traditionally used for gin, volume. Uh, in the presence of juniper berries and other natural botanicals, provided that juniper taste is predominant. I, I wish I could remember who told me that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that whether they were just messing with me or not. Maybe, Maybe they were just saying it like tastes the same. It, it does, but it doesn't. But it, like it, it would taste the same without the juniper or whatever. I don't know. Mm. Not a big gin fan. I love gin. Oh, I used to love it. It was my favorite. If I gin's good. If if well, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't go even that go road. there. I'm not going to go down. Anyway, gin. <laughs> I love gin very much. Uh, Hendrix gin was the shit. Speaking of things that you shouldn't drink. I saw uh, the FDA released uh, an announcement the other day. Okay. And I'm going to load it right here. Oh, here it is. Drinking bleach will not cure cancer or, or autism, FDA warns. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's some product that people sell called Miracle Mineral Solution. That's that they, just bleach? That they say is chlorine dioxide. and uh, Or chlorine dioxide. And I guess they say that it's supposed to cure autism... HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other stuff, and the FDA had to officially come out and say it doesn't. Isn't that, that what stuff. Martha Dump Truck drank, or was that Drano? And Heather's? Oh, was I it don't bleach remember. Or Heather? I haven't I seen remember. Heather's in forever, dude. Mm -hmm. Millie, was it bleach or Drano that Martha drank? Drano. Mm -hmm. And also doesn't cure. Also doesn't cure autism yeah. or cancer or anything. Please else. don't drink anything like this. I can't believe that. Like the FDA has to make a statement like that. Yeah. That don't drink bleach. It's the same, that's the same thing as putting a warning on a ladder that's like, don't stand on one foot at the top, at the I top love of the ladder. I that graphic of the guy. Yeah. Well, people need to be told to vaccinate their kids, so can't really give anyone the benefit of the doubt. Ooh, hot take. You know, tackle <laughs> tackle vax, vaxxers, huh? You're an idiot. Jessica, you somewhere Jessica kid. Alba's like, hmm. Vaccinate your fucking kids. Not Jessica kids. Alba, the other one. Um, Justin Timberlake's wife. She's oh, an anti-vaxxer. Jessica Biel. Jessica, Jessica Biel. Biel, sorry. Yeah. She's an anti-vaxxer. Yeah, that just came out a few weeks ago, right? Yeah. Oh, I can't believe that. Did anyone come out and just reassure everyone that wind farms don't give you cancer? <gasps> I think it's been an ongoing thing still, right? I mean, that, that misinformation is still being spread <laughs> via one person, yes. I don't think it's being spread by anyone in power. <laughs> what? It was spread last week, I think. Did yeah, he come back he, again? He's yeah, came honestly, back last week. He's been going on about that for decades. There's like old clips of him in the '90s, like uh, bitching about wind farms, ruin, I think, it, ruining the views from his golf course. I think I was. Well, didn't wasn't I out of the country when you said it this this last time? Like when it came back up, and y'all told me about it on the podcast, and I didn't believe you. <laughs> I thought y'all were trying to fuck with me. <sighs> oh, oh shit! He keeps so one upping himself. Yeah. I like the uh, the bizarre. <clears throat> Uh, I'm gonna bring this up just because it pertains to uh, your heritage, but uh, I like the bizarre like handwritten like notes he's been sending to Justin Trudeau. Oh yeah, like, looking good, buddy. What? I don't what? know about this. Yeah, what just is like this? he sends him uh, like magazine Clip covers, of magazine yeah. covers and stuff, and it's like looking hot. <laughs> <laughs> so he sent it to the to the Canadian Embassy, and they weren't sure if it was real or if it was a joke or what. <laughs> the president sending, sending him, junk mail, sending him fan mail. <laughs> What's he trying to do? He sent an SASE with it, said please sign and send back. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. That would be really funny. Yeah, I, I, I heard about that like two weeks ago or something. Mm. So weird. I, I want, we these should are, all do these that. These are weird times. Yeah, they're living weird in times. That it we're feels in. like I'm living in a in a nightmare sometimes. Yeah, it's like, like I can't, I can't it's believe like we're this in a season of Black Mirror and we just don't know it. Yeah, like yeah. I can't believe this is actual real life. 
and that if there are people enough people that made certain decisions for us to be here right now. We have seen a version of Trump who potentially has to get reelected. What is the version of Trump going to be like when he doesn't have to do that anymore? If. If? Then yeah, yeah if. You're, you're presuming that he would be reelected. Well, yeah. <laughs> If and you guys aren't that I much, don't wanna... you guys aren't that much better off either. Yeah, hey, I'm not. I'm you're, you're not, it's not a fight. Kareem to I'm saying, Kareem be... to Brexit very quickly <laughs> as, with as Boris no Johnson <laughs> in the in the driver's seat. It's not a good time, <laughs> all around. But he I'm saying that. a second term Trump is going to be a really bad time. I don't know. I must admit, I don't know a lot about Boris Johnson, but I I watched that uh, John Oliver piece it was on him. Interesting. It was really it was really interesting. fascinating. Makes you really wonder about the guy. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Just about how it, he did it. It was like two weeks ago on his show, um, or maybe a week ago. But it's basically he did like a, an expose about how it's all probably a gimmick, and he's really, really smart. And this messed up hair, and the clothes, to and distract. the and the bumbling and is to distract. Car full of trash. Like, yeah, they, they they gave it actually a really potentially insidious example, right? Yeah. So you think about Boris Johnson and the Brexit campaign, the Leave campaign, and the big thing that I always think about, and a lot of people think about, is the bus. With the lie printed on it that yep. you know we're going to save 300 600, million quid oh, however million nhs right um so like normally when you think of boris johnson you th and you think of a bus you think of that bus. or you think of him hanging like right <laughs> getting, so, like stuck in the he, sky he did an interview after that I, I don't know i don't remember when the interview was where they asked him like some the interviewer asked him what do you like to do in your spare time like if you want to relax and unwind what do you do he says well what i like to do is i like to recreate like miniature models of buses and they're like, what? And it's like this really weird, awkward exchange. Very stilted. Yeah, where he's like being weird about making buses and not wanting to show his buses because he's embarrassed. And then John Oliver says, well, you know, a reason why he probably did that was so if you Google Boris Johnson bus, you get that video clip instead, instead of a picture of the of NHS bus, the NHS bus <clears throat> from the Brexit Leave campaign. Oh, if that's deliberate, that's incredibly smart. Right. So it's I, like there's no clear evidence that that was deliberate, but, but it's the kind of thing where you would manipulate perception. Yes, there's a lot of like really interesting examples of how he, the dude might just be the most well-crafted, brilliant, fucking devious dude ever. He was the MP of Henley, which is a tiny town next, well, right near mine, and he used to come to my school because he was a local MP. He didn't give off that vibe. Yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. What vibe did he give off? It's a bumbling buffoon sort of getting lost in my school. <laughs> I think that's but what, what he was, was going it, for. What was it? They had like a like a prep school photo with him and David Cameron. Yeah, was it David Cameron. Yeah, it was him and David Cameron. Yeah, yeah. And he, he was... went to really good schools and a very great, really good education. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was born in New York. He's an American. Yep. Oh, did you say he, New York? Yep. Hmm? He well, he gave up his citizenship, I think, because of tax reasons. Because <laughs> an American passport, if you're not it's an American, is one of the worst things you can have. It's super expensive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we're at about time to wrap up. Does anybody else have anything else they want to bring up or talk about? We didn't even talk about Tumblr getting sold for $3 million. Oh, my God. Wait, what? Is that true? Mm-hmm. Yahoo bought Yahoo, Tumblr for $1.1 $1. billion. Who did they sell them to? WordPress. They, <laughs> sold, they sold Tumblr to WordPress for less than $3 million. They bought it for did, over a billion, you $1. said. $1.1 $1. $1 billion. Oh, my God. <gasps> that wasn't was there, like five years ago? Uh, Six years ago. Wasn't there something similar where what? people had the opportunity to sell for, like, a couple hundred million and then said no and then later they were only able to sell for like a couple hundred oh, thousand. Yeah, that happened. Uh, yeah, um, MySpace, Dig. Uh, Dig. Dig. It happened yeah, to uh, um, Napster, right? Oh, yeah. They came back and yeah. Um, it happens a lot. Wow, good job, Yahoo. Why even sell it if, it's, if you've lost a billion dollars on it? And what else are you going to do with it? Yeah. I don't have it, but like... any amount of money. It's like, well, we, three million on a billion? We could have crowdfunded it and bought Tumblr. We could have had a whip round. <laughs> <laughs> For all we know, too, Tumblr might be hemorrhaging money and it might be, yeah, they might need to dump it to get rid of yeah. that, that loss oh, off true. the books. Yeah. Never mind. Let's not crowdfund that. <laughs> Shit, man. I think didn't, I think Pornhub tried to buy it. Yeah, I remember Tumblr? that. Or they tried to buy it. I think so, yeah. yeah. I guess that would make sense. They said they would put the porn back on it. <laughs> yeah. Just for that one reason. Um, all right. Well, that's it. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Hey, everyone. If you like this episode of the Receive Podcast, you should like the video down below. You should also subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notifications. Do you have to do anything else? No, that's it. They can also watch videos down below. 
Uh, there's nothing else you have to do on YouTube, right? Like and subscribe. Like watch and subscribe. Videos, to, tell your, to email all your friends. Email 10 friends or else you're going to have bad luck for $5.